Oh, there it is, folks. Abrax the Precipice, the Expanse role-playing game actual play, where we play the Expanse role-playing game put out by Green Run and Publishing. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. This is episode three with Jacob, episode uh, five of Moloch's Gambit. I think I got that right in the tag, actually. Yeah, okay, very <laughs> cool. Um, Jacob returns. Uh, Jacob Mundell from season five, who played Eric on the show of uh, The Expanse. Uh, is returned with us one more time. We appreciate having those of you guys that cheered before the stream even started too. Thank you so much. Like, I appreciate that. That's super cool. I'm glad you cheered for just the general idea that I might come on. Um, <laughs> not even that I showed up, just that I, I might, I might uh, come on. Um, but Jacob, tell us a little about yourself, what you're doing, and I'll make sure to share the link for your little uh, charity. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jacob Mundell, and I'm a I'm not a working actor, I'm a working class actor, and I live in Chicago, uh, Illinois. I run a theater company there. I'm, uh, I am got a, I got an agent and a manager and they send me out on stuff. Right now I'm gunning really hard to get some roles in the Dick Wolf universe. Uh, Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Ice Cream, Ice cream. Chicago Sewage. I'd like to be the guy getting crushed by an ambulance or something. Um, that's a dream of mine. Um, I run a 501c3 here in Chicago. It's a theater company and we are emerging from COVID and we're uh, launching we're launching a, a, a production, an original show that was shuttered during COVID and um, we're relaunching it now. It's got a $20,000 budget. We're doing really well. We're at 18,500 uh, 18, right now. So we're getting really close. Um, I don't take payment at Theater Evolve. None of the admin take payment. We pay all of our actors. We pay our designers. We purchase insurance to um, to insure our actors. If there's an accident, we follow the Chicago Not In Our House workplace safety rules. Um, doing our best. And uh, this production is really cool. It's by Chicago Native Playwright. And if you... Uh, um, if you feel like you have anything, literally, guys, $5 helps. If you got anything to spare for our fundraiser to put on some live theater in Chicago, we would uh, super appreciate it. So thank you. Oh, I'm going to personally match the next $250 that uh, comes in for the company. So if you want your donation to go twice as far, you can give half as much as you wanted to, and we'll take it. <laughs> And uh, I don't know, we'll maybe if you put in, I think you can put a note in the Stripe donation. If you do, that you're like an Abraxas Precipice fan, I'll give you a personal shout out. Maybe I'll send you an Eric picture with an autograph or something. So what? I don't know, whatever well, I you know want. Option. Make, yeah, no, okay. Uh, yeah, Excuse put me. up the link. I'm in, I'm in. Guys, I'm, in. I'm, giving, I'm giving all of you special stuff anyway. <laughs> so uh. just... But like, yeah, so if you're an Expanse fan and you love nerd stuff, I'm happy to send your dad a get well soon card <laughs> or whatever you need. Happy birthday to your kid. I, you know, if if the guy who played Eric for four episodes in season five of that show you like is is useful, then I'm happy to do it. So theaterevolve.com. John's providing the link to our fundraiser. Thank you so much for supporting the live arts in Chicago. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of supporting live arts, uh, here's a link to our Patreon. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the segue um, was smooth. We've been, we've been posting a lot of our, our updated art. Uh, I guess you got to send it to you, uh, Jake. I haven't shown it to you, but uh, we're, we're updating our art a bit here. It's looking really good. Uh, we'll hopefully have that done probably the next like, week or so. Um, and we're that's a great way to support us, great way to support the stream. Obviously, your subs and cheers are great, but we love uh, Patreons by far, one of the most efficient ways to support us. Um, and then uh, we also have merch you can pick up. Uh, that'll I'll run that uh, one here too as well. Uh, we don't have a giveaway this week. Next week though is Jacob's final episode with us. Uh, we're gonna have a big giveaway for that one actually, and I'll preview that real quick. So I got a few things to show off. Uh, we're, it's be, huge. It is huge. Uh, we have uh, a pair of the Expanse dice sets. So the Martian and the Earther dice to give out from Green Run Publishing. And then uh, I also have the Expanse vinyl record uh, yes. give out soundtrack, yes. which is very cool. Um, and uh, it's it's got the uh, the Belter cover of Highway Star, which is amazing. 
uh, and a lot of fun stuff on it. But and then I also have it set up so it, when if we hit our goal, uh, our sub goal for the month, every time I hit I hit the goal, I'm gonna add more and more stuff to the giveaway. So I'm gonna add like um, prototype miniatures from uh, Stonehaven. I got a bunch of other miniatures to give out to you. I got like uh, more dice. Got a lot of stuff for people. So I'm gonna make sure that's a, that's our our behemoth giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> That's, dude, guys, it writes itself. All right. <laughs> that, that one prize is perfect for people who are into the expanse and vinyl record players. Yeah, yes. no, I, yeah, I, I know my, I know my demographic. I know that, that was my demographic <laughs> when I saw that, and it's actually pretty cool. It's funny about that too. Is uh, it's awesome. It's supposedly an edition of uh, 2250 because that's the year the expanse takes place in. What? <laughs> hmm. That's so clever. Hmm. Suppose they're twenty three. They haven't actually released the number, but it's kind of funny. But it's a great, it's a great edition. I'll, 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 I'll send you uh, images of it, uh, Jacob. If you haven't seen the interiors of it. All right, folks. Uh, we're gonna go through our opening credits, and then we'll uh, be back to play Abrax Precipice. Whee! I can't hit my button. Where's, where's my button? Oh, there's my button. That's oh, a button. <laughs> button. Where's the button? Last we left off, uh, there was a sudden, very sudden stop. Injuries abound. Uh, you've gotten word from the other ships, uh, the Thomas Prince, Behemoth, other ships sitting in their flotilla. Some have gone dark. That is, there's the thought is that everyone's either just dead or dying on the ship. Um, there's uh, been relief coordination as best as possible, um, and the Behemoth is going to provide that relief. Uh, they're tr currently getting their drum spun up to provide gravity for draining of wounds and the like, uh, so people can uh, have a better chance, at, a lot better chance of healing. Um, you've been scheduled, uh, the, the members of the Sinclair have been scheduled to uh, arrive. However, though, um, if you, you have two options here. One is that you can wait for, wait longer and wait for a uh, transport ship, so one of the little shuttles to bring you over, or, and, and the ships aren't very far from each other. They're all in proximity now to the, the ring station. So you're, I mean, honestly, like the EVA action to get to the behemoth from you guys is maybe half an hour, maybe 45 minutes, not that bad um, at the speed limit. Um, or you can EVA over there um, and even use the drones to tow you. Uh, the only person that's not on the ship right now is Waxor. Waxor is uh, off with the mech, but he is in communication with you at, at real time. Uh, he's with them. He's taking the mech over the behemoth to try to help start uh, disassembling the weapons on the behemoth so they can spin the drum up. I, I assume that's something. I think we talked about that last time. Wax or something. Yes. Yeah, you do. Oh, help, yeah. You help out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> screw those guys. They can't borrow my, my screwdriver. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm the screwdriver. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Space screwdriver. That's the name of the game. All right. So, John, I'm looking at the, the the inventory right now. We have 12 vac suits. We have four EVA thruster packs. That means, like, four people can directly get over. Yeah. And you can also, the other idea, too, is to hitch, your, hitch a line to the drones and have the drones hug you over. Got it. So Because um, the, dro the drones are pretty big, here. and they can, they can operate for a few hours 
without much issue. And they're also like, they're going to move smartly. And you the EVAs, you don't just like pilot it. You kind of program it where you want it to go. And then it runs a program to get you there with optimal like fuel usage. So it doesn't sit there and like strand us, um, get you stranded. But each EVA suit's got about four hours of thrust. So mm-hmm. like you guys got like, I mean, you guys can make uh, two trips back and forth without refueling them. No problem. And this is, and and that's the only way because the the other option takes takes a lot longer. You would be waiting like a, at least like a whole other day or two to for an, for a shuttle because they're usually mostly using the shuttles to bring the wounded over. Um, and you have one wounded person on your on your ship. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you want to, you could. Uh, he is able to be suited up. Uh, this would be uh, Mikhail. He's able to be suited up, um, and he's under like. Uh, he's sedated and the like to uh, kind of waiting, trying to minimize his, uh, you know, metabolism and everything and, and his uh, vital signs. So, yeah. Well, and and it's fair to point out that none of us feel great right now. Some of us are functioning, yeah, but like bad. all bad. of us probably have some internal bleeding right now. So it's probably better to get over there. Right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we should, we should definitely do that. You know, take. We can always just like zoom the suits back over and then get back over. You know, whatever we need to do to get us all over there. It would also mean you. I mean, and there's plenty of EVA suits on on board the Behemoth. Right. Like if they're not short on them or anything like that too, and you can recharge the EVA stuff. Um, but it's it's really up to you on how much time you want to spend. Uh, basic like, do you want to wait or do you want to just go over there? I think it'd be best if we got there quick to help people too. I mean, yeah. we're gonna need as many people to help mm. as possible. At the very least, if they need to, some people can. the The best off of the crew can wait for the shuttle to come tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one's doing good, but I mean, Mikhail mm. has to go over. We need Mikhail to go over. I need to go over to reconnect with Bull. Um, I don't think my implants for my eyes are going to work in a vacuum so I will we we need to go but I'm just going to let you know that this is going to be a little bit of a leap of faith for me because I'm going to be flying blind out there maybe I can tow with someone or um something but uh, this is a moment of vulnerability for me. I mean, you can definitely hop on my back and for a piggyback ride across okay. if that makes you feel more comfortable. It, it's more of like just like hooking like a like a line, you know, like kind of like a climbing rig to the thing. And no, 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 I want to see this happen. No, no, I want to <laughs> see this happen. You would, you would be blocking the thrusters, but yeah. Yeah, it would be a short trip. <laughs> yeah, he will, he will go that. You you guys will part ways quite quickly. <laughs> so, if everyone, so we go four at a time. How many do we have right now? We we've unfortunately we've lost two people in the. Yeah. So right now, um, you know that McMichael's is is like actively doesn't want to go over. Um, he's he's much more comfortable navigating in the zero gravity. Abby missed his missing his leg. Um, he knows that the behemoth he would be like getting refitted for a prosthetic on the behemoth right now is a very low priority medical <laughs> situation for him. So yeah, there's so that means there's eight of us that need to go over. McMichael's uh, is gonna you got uh, Drax is Drax is he's volunteering to stay back and if you want him to pilot the uh, the drones he's more than happy to do that. So seven. Uh, yeah, so it'd be uh, U5 mm-hmm. plus um, Mikhail in the there. suit, and then Marine is, is a high demand person, so seven. Uh, Waxer isn't there, so it'd be. Oh, Waxer isn't there, so yeah, it's only six. Waxer's gonna. Six. Yeah. All right, so that's still two trips. Um, and also, you also. Well, no, you can still do it in. Uh, you don't need the EVA packs to uh, bring over with you, use the drones. Gotcha, because we have four packs and we have two drones, so that's one trip. Yeah, and you can, right. also use, you can also use the, the drones primarily to, like, tow cargo. Right. Um, right. And so that would include... So whatever med- we need to bring with us. Yeah, so they're they're mostly concerned with uh, medical supplies. Water is not really an issue on the Behemoth. They actually have extremely good recyclers. I mean, the ship is meant to... The Mormons were going to be like, hey, we're going to go on for 150 years and not refuel. Okay, cool. It was pretty good at that. Um, 
they they do need uh, medical supplies. So if you want to pack up all your all your med, as many med kits as you as you have, you use quite a, a bit of it, but you have some left. Um, and then food would be another thing to bring over if you want to bring over food. We've got a hundred and. I mean, this isn't a time to worry about rationing. We've got 166 rations, and there's eight of us on the ship now. I guess that would last us a certain amount of time. But the whole thing would have been there's a note that says one month's worth per person. So that was with uh, two extra people. So that's two less people. So it would be like. You guys have enough to last about twenty months. About twenty months on space. All right. Well, if we're here longer than a month, then something is seriously wrong. So I think. Yeah. I don't know, Cap. The captain, Exo. Can, can we bring food? Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing all the math. Former quartermaster here, so I, I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I'd. I'd like to take. We'll just take a hundred. Okay. Because you never know if we, you know, what's going to happen if we get stuck. We'll take a hundred. Yeah. So you bring out. You, um, you start packing. Uh, you start packing that into. Um, your crate you guys have, your cargo hold and everything. Um, that's one crate uh, easily that you can get a, a lot of food into, rations and stuff like that too, just prime materials that can be processed into it all, no problem. Uh, what else do you guys want to bring? I mean, we've got med, we've got medical supplies, but on the other hand, I don't know if I want to, maybe we can send half of them. Okay, so 11, we'll say 11 usage, uh, uses then. Yeah, because okay. we still got to come back and who knows what's going to happen, so. Mm-hmm. And if we ever have, if we have to fly back to whatever station, right, we will also be prepared for that. And, and I, there might be other things happening from, you know, kind of our secondary mission. Uh, <laughs> so it's probably not a bad idea to, to keep um, at least half of those medical supplies. I assume we're bringing the one full toolkit. I just wanted to put it well, on the record. Well, they have plenty of toolkits over there. Oh, um, that's not, not an issue at all. Yeah, they got. Yeah, we of, should be. We should try to keep it. They were working on the ship as it was flying. They're they're flush with tools over there. So Mag that's not really bad. EVA thrust. Okay, the only thing I can see in the inventory that might be useful left is uh, all of our guns. So, um, <laughs> Zenny is bringing their pistol. Yeah, your personal sidearms are fine, but if you want to bring yeah. the, the weapons from the ship, that's a different story. Which would be the rifles and the. Uh, the tasers and some of the pist- the pistols you guys have, and then also the armor. That's, that's an interesting question. Bringing the armor. Yeah, I, 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 whatever anybody wants to take, that I'm comfortable with that. I won't take any kind of other weapons over my stun gun, um, because if somebody makes me mad, I'm just gonna hit them. <laughs> <laughs> zap them. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna hit them and zap them. So, in whatever order. I mean, I'm just gonna. We we have five asp batons. What is that? Is that? It's just like a. It's a. It's a baton. You you swing and it it extends. Nice. Oh yeah. Oh, so it's just like a collapsible like, yeah. whack 'em stick, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Wyatt and uh, Myrtle like kind of look at them kind of weird when when they when you start talking about them. <laughs> a funny story there. Well, <laughs> I recommend. People grab since we seem to have a surplus of those. Do you want to bring all the guns? I mean, you just pack them all into one crate. Uh, yeah, I mean, but McMichael is like, can you leave me something in case someone has a board, yeah. like like a pair, like a pair yeah. of pistols? Let's leave McMichael something, even you know. I mean, he might know where my secret stash. He does. Okay. <laughs> leave him. Do we actually have anything in that stash? Have we been keeping track of what's in that stash? Yeah, part of, part of what's in this is part of in the stash, so it was like a few oh, of the God. guns were hidden, but you guys, I mean, right now, it's not the time to hide guns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, last I don't know. Thing. Now might be the perfect time to hide guns. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. What about the two? Let's leave McMichael's a gun. Does Drax want one, too? Like, hey, he wouldn't leave mind. He's, he's yeah. like, I don't want anyone trying to board here. No, I want to make sure I can defend if Let's leave them two rifles, take two rifles. Okay. And what about the medium armor? There's two medium armors. We should leave them one or we should, two to defend we the should ship. Pro- or- I think we should leave those here because okay. those are going to be hard to bring on. And yeah. also, they, we have more space to move around if we need to. What do they we need have- all this this big of an arsenal for? What are we expecting to go over there and see? Who fucking knows, man? <laughs> you do know I mean, that they're the, the bulls. Arms- the bull's bringing on people from like all the ships. And he's, he's currently trying to get the Martians to come over, but the Martians are really reluctant to come over. It seems like they don't, they, they view it as surrendering if they were to come over. Yeah, I mean, I know my people, so I don't think it's a bad idea for us to be ready. 
because you know who knows what our a own bunch of hot are heads think up together us, right it's like what if our people you know from mars or earth gonna think about us being out here so okay so my, my main question is what about the rifles are you guys bringing any of them with you <laughs> right? Okay, if, there's, if there's only <laughs> two, wait, are, what are the territory? What are the complications? What are the complications? Uh, like, uh, are, I mean, if we bring rifles on board the behemoth, no, they, they, they could be they, they could be taken. They do have weapons over there themselves. I mean, they got they have an arsenal. Uh, it is a military ship, but this is more of like your private stash. You wanted to grab secret weapons. I just, just want to bring my knife and my gun. Yeah, my yeah pistol. your pistol in your yeah. 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 Bring your pistol Maybe in your I'm knife. off base here. Maybe I'm off base. I was just. I I agree, I agree that we should take. I agree that we should take the two rifles and keep them just in case. Oh, because shit. like, man, are we even gonna be able to get back to the stuff and use it? I mean, the more valuable than the guns are our people, and us sending this many people to the behemoth is a huge projection of our limited power so i just I, I just want the group to be able to take care of itself i mean i like there's no conflict right now but w given the amount of injury and uh chaos that might be going over there you don't know when people are going to turn on themselves i just want us to be able to protect our pod right I I, I'm, I'm down you know it's like we can always you know have one for waxer when we get there all right so i'm hearing two rifles um, you guys all have personal. You guys can bring personal sidearms. That's really easy to bring. Right. Um, yeah. so you, I heard. I heard. I heard the stun gun. I heard uh, Zay's got their own personal revolver. Uh, you know, you guys are officers in the military, so you guys can carry a pistol and a, um, a knife, no problem. <clears throat> uh, I have ahead. a sidearm personally, and mm -hmm. if no one objects, I'll take yeah. a taser. Yeah, grab a taser. Please help yourself. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you guys kind of box the, all all the weapons you can into a single crate. You secure it. It's locked up. It's got a lock on and everything like that too. So um, you guys will know how to open it up, no problem. Um, you start suiting up. Um, the uh, dingo when you suit up, it you know the once the helmet goes on, it gets a little you get a little claustrophobic. Uh, you can feel it kind of enclosed and everything like that too. Um, it's not EVAs going outside the vehicle or outside the the ships is not something you really have done. You're kind of a station type of guy, but you can still yeah. even though even then though you can still feel through your boots. Like you can feel people moving around. You're you're, you're kind of sensitive to that element of. It. Um, I mean, I've never spacewalked before, so. I mean, you've been to the training, but yeah, you haven't like really gone for it, and this is going for it. This is like. Yeah. I mean, I, I imagine even though I'm still on board the ship, like when I put this suit on, it's probably dampening my information. Oh yeah, I mean you can't like, like you like you're used to be able to pull information from around you. Now you're only pulling information from maybe like half an inch from your face. Um, if you, even if you're Jesus. crying. Well, right. I'm I, I'm I'm putting my hand on the wall. If Sorry. someone, this is embarrassing. If someone wouldn't mind letting me hold their belt loop or something, or just. Will somebody hold my hand? <laughs> I'll put a hand on your shoulder. Uh, <laughs> you can feel it, and you can hear. You can talk to them. You can hear them through the comm and everything like that too. So you can hear, uh, and the comms kind of adapt based on how distant they are. So like you can kind of tell if they're closer or not. But you can hear okay. Zenny's like yeah. touching your shoulder and such. I mean, what's our game plan here? Is someone gonna? Can, is some maybe whack maybe Drax or McMichaels? Can give me directions. Like I'm, I assume I'm, I'm guiding uh, my own, my own, my own. He's my a, own he's, a better, he's a better, he's a better thing. And I'm just gonna clip myself straight to Dingo. Yeah. Just, yeah, just, just like literally as we're, yeah. as you're talking, yeah, you're, just gonna, you're like you just, you just clip, clips yeah. right onto you. I got you. And you can, you guys can put the EVA packs on. Uh, so we have one on Zenny, we have one on Myrtle, we have one on um, Wyatt, and then we have one on Mikhail. Um, and so you guys kind of gear up and such. Um, you can hear the drones also deploying the, the bays opening for them, the drones kind of coming out. Um, you move the cargo through and everything like that into the airlock. It opens up, no problem. Um, it's a pretty easy action. You can feel the mag boots moving around, like you're, you're mag magnetized to the side, no problem. Um, and you're waiting for like the countdown for the EVAs will kick on and, and do their program route to take you to the behemoth. Those of you that are out here, you can see this is completely black. There's no stars. You, you can see the one gate way, way, way out in the distance. It's kind of a faint little like dot. And you can easily see the glowing blue, weird hue sphere in the center. And you can see this like energy that's around. When you guys go through it, it doesn't really 
like right in front of you is around the ship that's like pulling the ships in and putting them in the orbit around the, the ring station. And you guys like move through it, but it doesn't seem to interact with you. It doesn't feel like it's even there. But whatever it is, it's pulling these ships no matter how hard they push uh, into it. And you can even see some of the ships across the way, like the Martian and the UN ships and other OPA ships, even have thrusters move. They're still firing, but they're not going anywhere. They're just sitting there. Um, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So, you, um, uh, Dingo, you're playing by faith here a little bit. Give me a, give me a self-discipline test, Dingo. I want, this is going to be, uh, roll your, uh, willpower, I believe. Jeez. So you don't freak out in the scene. I got a two on willpower. Here we go. Hey, that's higher than mine, so you're doing all <laughs> right. You can do it! You got this, it. This, this big talking security guy goes, <laughs> I have no willpower. <laughs> It's right. scary. Come on, okay. in space. It's scary. Right, yeah, right. We move. I... A, we move an inch to the left, and then we're off in space forever. I got a twelve with no doubles. Okay. Um. Yeah. You. You know, Dingo. You. You. You're kind of a controlled guy, but you can. Like, it's weird because all you hear is your heart going rate right, going up. Like, it's really loud to you. Like, you're kind of alone with your body, which you're not used to. But you can hear everyone kind of through the comms coordinating. I mean, Dingo all his life has been a control freak. His confidence comes from his extension to tap into everything around him, and suddenly his world is as small as his clothes. So, yes, I am very uncomfortable right now. Um, does anyone have anything they want to do special before the EVA? And Drax has gone through and programmed the EVA actions for all, all your guys' suits. You guys can see them running on the thing. They're ready to run. You can override them, so you can go to manual control at any time if you want to. Um, he and you guys can override the control. He wants to control the drones really quickly. But the drones are just kind of like in movement mode. They're not even like they don't have their, their tools deployed or their cameras are just kind of moving yeah. through. I'm, I'm just trying to. S- oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you go. I, no, you. I was <laughs> going to send Wyatt just a little note. And he says, "Is it just weird that people in the belt have never been out, and we have? It's it's really just kind of an interesting thing. Not in a bad way." It's, but just, I would have never just expected like anybody it. out in the belt, you know, had would have never been outside. I know, it's, I, it's, but it's about, it's about the same as anybody else. It's like the people on Luna. How many of those people have ever, you know, taken a walk out? Yeah. Is any? Think about it. You're right. Yeah. It's not. It's not like there's anything we could do about it. But will you tell me if we're about to slam into something and die? Uh, how visibly, uh, not, not cool does Dingo look? <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell through the suit, uh, because his eyes, okay. his eyes just kind of move around, like, just, like, randomly. They're not, like, he doesn't have, like, control, right. control over him. I'm not, yeah, I'm but, more like um, the, the rest of that I can see. You can see him breathing a little hard in his suit. I mean, most, most belters would know not to breathe, like, to fog up the suit, but he doesn't know that, so he's, like, fogging up the suit. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, and he also doesn't necessarily need to not... It does. It's, it's it doesn't not matter. fog up the suit. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't really matter too terribly much. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I think. Um, so there's like a tether. How how far away does the tether? I mean, it's like, as long as you want to make it. So I was I was thinking like maybe like it's like te- like maybe like six meters, five meters. So in feet, that would be... <laughs> uh, like 10, 15 feet. Well, bad with 10, 15 feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll come back. Uh, Dingo, I got, uh, I got good news for you. There's nothing out here. <laughs> uh, which is... I, I mean, I don't know if that's good news for you, but... Um, well, I got I'm... <laughs> I'm looking at nothing, so I guess technically it's I'm still seeing accurately. Yeah. Yeah, you're uh uh I uh I have um I've I've only uh done this a few times. If that makes you uh feel better or worse. Um and it's not been easy any times that I've done it. So you're doing pretty okay. All right. Thank you. Don't get too mushy on me. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Um, how, how, okay, so how do we want to do this? Uh, you, you got 
uh, the four of you and, and, and Mikhail on EVA packs. Dingo, do you want to have him towed by a drone or do one of you want to try to tow him? Oh, I'm towing Dingo. Towing him? Okay. Dingo's on me. I got right. him. Okay. Um, Drax gives you the countdown. Countdown goes off, no problem. You guys continue on. Uh, Dingo, you're, you got about 45 minutes of this flight, uh, about 40 minutes of flight across this expanse of space. Um, and it's a silence. You can you can hear one talking, coordinating. Um, you hear Waxor occasionally chime in. Um, you talk to Bull a little bit. Bull's like telling you like good move coming over here. We look forward. I look forward to hopefully seeing you in person. Um, everyone's being pretty reassuring uh, with you, and uh, is happy to have you on board. Zenny inside though is trying really hard to keep it cool because this Zenny does not want to be out in space. Or wherever the wherever the hell this is, Z- this is like the last thing Zenny wants right now. <laughs> but notice that Dingo is having a harder time, and he's like, "Okay, it's fine. Yeah. We gotta be fine for like just like two seconds." All right, you guys. I refuse. Here. I refuse to show weakness, and I'll roll to. I'll roll and fail at it. Give me an assault discipline test. <laughs> With willpower. Yep. Yeah. Keep it together. <laughs> Or don't. That would make for a cool story. No well, I rolled, I rolled 11, so if I fail, he'll probably just out... After, like, five minutes of silence, he'll probably say something like, I'm not scared! Yeah. <laughs> and you, you can Zay, you can feel the EVA thrusters, like, compensating for his kind of fidgeting. Mm-hmm. Um, his kind of, he's kind of moving the mass around a little bit, so you can... The EVA pack's got plenty of thrust you're not really worried about. Like, you're only using maybe a quarter of the thrust to do this whole move. But you can feel him mm-hmm. pushing it a little bit. Um, hugging on it. Hey, Dingo, do you, uh, do you like any music? <clears throat> There's this You know classic... any songs? There's this, uh, several hundred year old band that's basically classical music at this point. It's, uh, it's by this band called White Snake. And, uh, They've got some seriously metal guitar solos. Mm-hmm. And they've got this what lyric a- that says, No one can see your tears when you're crying in the rain. I have to take a word is- on what that... And then Dingo just starts like- singing. He goes, The sun is shining. Ooh, but it's raining in my heart. And he said, and here I go again on my <laughs> own. <laughs> See, guys, I'm just like White Snake. I'm out here in the void. I've seen stars on screens all my life, but now I'm actually closer to the stars than I've ever been. And I don't I know what some, they look like. I got some. I got some bad news, Dingo. There's no stars out here. Yeah, but like. I'm closer to them than I was before. And here I go again on my own, (laughs) walking down the only road I've ever known. (laughs) And I know you guys are all here with me, but like a drifter, I was born to walk alone. (laughs) Oh my God, how much of this 45 minutes are we done with? (laughs) About 28 minutes. (laughs) We have your turn okay, well, so. Yeah, <laughs> so no, you're wasting no more time. All right. <laughs> All right, well, this song is about Marie Antoinette. And then he starts going, Long ago when days untold were ruled by lords of greed, uh, maidens fared with gold they dared to bear their own greed. And he goes on. All right, so the, you guys, you guys start, you guys start, uh, you guys get out there. That's very nice, Jacob. Uh, you guys get out there and you guys Beautiful. deal with like uh, uh, Bingo, like singing to himself, trying to like you know uh, humming in the dark type situation. Um, you can tell this was not his uh, finest moment. Um, this is exactly what Zenny wanted, though. But you, but you respect <laughs> exactly it. You respect it. You want to break me down? You want to hear me say it? I'm scared, okay? (laughs) Okay. So um, eventually you get to the airlock of the behemoth, no problem. It opens up. It's a really easy transition. They bring in all the gear. Airlock cycles through. All your guys' stuff's there. Uh, There's some crew welcoming you. They go, hey, welcome to the behemoth. 
Oh, shit. You can feel, yeah, you feel it. And you you kind of reach out, and you're in a pretty big open area. You haven't been in this big of an area, Dingo, for a while. Damn. All right, how can we be useful? What's going on? Oh, well, we, uh, we're we just here to welcome you, uh, set you up with one of the campsites. Everyone's kind of, uh, the drum's getting ready to spin up, but we're going to... Uh, Get everyone once the drum starts spinning everyone's gonna set up campsites uh if you're wounded head down to medical bay if you're not wounded uh we'll we'll have you up on the uh, inner drum uh here you can grab one of these tents they have like bundles of tents like they're like kind of like more like a little like temporary shelter type situations and they're like yeah you take uh one or two of them however many you have take your own personal gear down there and we'll get you set up and then uh once the drum starts spinning wax or i mean yeah wax or what's a uh, you're, yeah, go ahead. You're, you're hanging out with uh, the crew here. You actually hang out with Yan. You're actually hanging out with Zenny's brother, and he goes, uh, "He goes, hey, so what's uh, what's what's it like working with my sister?" Oh yeah, oh it's great, yeah. Oh she's 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 uh, such a good crew member. She's the best, yeah. What what does she do on the ship, man? Because she used to just like look oh. at package like boxes and see if they were good or not. She do calm. She shooting. She 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 works out a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff. I don't even know what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. He's like, all right, well, we got, I got this, uh, this barrel is about ready to go. Can your, your mech grab this one? And your mech's like ra- ready to grab this Yeah, yeah. Off. You got to come on the ship sometime and check it out and see, yeah, you know, see. I'll, see be, I'll be sure to do there. that. I'll be sure to yeah. do that. I got a, I got a, I got, and he pulls up, like a notification comes to you, Wax, for saying like, uh, the crew is bored of the behemoth. Oh, oh yeah, and about was, time. Yeah, those coils made it over. Oh, oh cool, man. So I'm going to ask her about that tour sometime. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. I tell hope me, they had. Yeah, go tell ahead. Me more about this. Uh, tell me more about this McMichael's guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you like he he a character on the ship, yeah. But he's a real smart guy. He's all the fixing right now. But uh, yeah, you know McMichael's. He's uh, you know sometimes he just got a different view on the ship. But it's what we need, yeah. He's, I think that's he, good. Well, yeah, I worked with him on Ganymede, and uh, yeah, you know he uh, he he's botanical. He got a green thumb, you know, so. <laughs> Good right. guy, yeah. He kind of goes, all right. Well, let's go and stow stow this stuff, and then we'll uh, we'll we can go on down there and head up and meet meet, meet up with the crew. Yeah, you got it. I, I like right. the behemoth. This ship is good, man. It's and big it's, and it's massive. Like it's like yeah. scary how big it is, uh, Waxer. Like you, you're like you can get lost on this thing easily. Yeah. Um, and you you guys get the the railgun dismounted, no problem. It's getting stowed away and everything like that too. Uh, it's a lot of parts. It's a pretty impressive job, honestly. Um. You guys pilot back to an airlock real quick, come on inside, um, and, uh, you know, take off your suits and everything like that, too. And they have your, they let your mech suits stow here, no problem. That's like, that's, there's plenty of, there's plenty of space. That's the big thing, you know. Good, um, good. You know, there, there's one of my favorite parts of the, of Abaddon's Gate is some, Bull asks one of the guys, he's like, he's like, how many wounded can we take on? And, and the guy's like, sir? And he's like, what's the problem? He's like, we're the fucking behemoth. We can take on everyone. <laughs> he's like, I don't know why you're asking me this. And Bull kind of laughs, like, oh, I guess you're right. I didn't think about that. But, but yeah, you can you can stow the thing, no problem. So you you guys get on um, about, you guys get about, um, uh, as you guys are kind of grabbing your stuff and, like, magnetizing it down and kind of with the mag boots, uh, you get a count, there's a, uh, an alert comes on everything saying, like, there's a countdown for the spin up of the drum. Um, did you guys want to try to take uh, Mikhail to the, the med bay first, or uh, what are you doing? I'll, t- I'll, yeah. I'll take Mikhail to the med okay. bay if you guys want to head the other way and I'll meet you there if that's alright. I guess this goes without saying we give them all the food and med that we brought Yeah, and they over. start going through it. What do you guys want to do with your personal crate? You want to bring it, it with, with you? This? Okay, yeah. take it with you? Okay. Yeah. Take right. it with can, us for the, our tent area. You can go someone ahead. be with it at all times? Anyone yeah, you, we can trade off? Yeah, yeah no problem. Um, and you guys can magnetize You guys magnetize it during the spin-up. So the spin starts, uh, you guys kind of feel yourself getting thrown into the wall a little bit, is what it kind of feels like. Everything gets turned 90 degrees suddenly. And um, it takes a little bit, it takes it about like a minute and a half for the spin-up, but once it spins up, it's got a decent amount of gravity. It's probably about like 15% of a G. I mean, it's something. You can run around now, uh, you know, you're, you're not like... Uh, just like down and around, but it feels kind of interesting being under like, uh, it's been like a few days since you guys have been under any kind of gravity, even thrust gravity. It's kind of re- uh, relieving and people cheer and it's, oh yeah, yeah. You get up to, um, all of you kind of reconvene, you have Mikhail in the med bay. Um, why, as you get in the med bay, you can see, I mean, there's a ton of people in here. 
it's like a few hundred. They have people in the hallways, people everywhere. They re, they, uh, you can see how bad the wounded are. There's people from the Thomas Prince. Uh, you do see one person walk kind of, um, you do see one guy that you spot, you recognize him. You're pretty sure it's Bull. This is like Dingo's boss. He's in the bed bay. He's like in a bed, just kind of like strapped into it. And he's just going off with a pad. He's just like doing stuff on his pad. Like he's like just uh, working nonstop. Seems to be talking to people. Uh, looks like the kind of guy, if you went and talked to him, he'd probably get pissed off at you. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going <laughs> to avoid him, but I'm going to let Dingo know that's that this is where he's at. If he All right, you take a, you take a quick you take a quick picture of him. Dingo, you get a picture of Bull sitting in the bed. He's all like laid out in, in a bed. I don't know if you knew he was injured or not, but he's he looks like he's pretty injured. He didn't tell me last episode, so this is news to me now. But I'll before I I know Bull before I approach him, I'll send him a text like, "Do you want to see me in person, or are you good?" All right, and it kind of gets put in the thing here. Um, yeah, so you guys, uh, yeah, in the, in the chat, as Commander Solo says, it's like the old gravitons at the state fair, except the payment's probably safer, sadly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, only a third of the people in, on it are injured. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you go, you, you guys kind of go up, and, and you can see the inside of the behemoth is just metal. It, it's just raw metal. It looks like they had it set up to like put like irrigation and ground in here, like earth, but they never got that far with it. And people are coming out with tents and setting up, and there's kind of like a makeshift bar. People are kind of setting up a little temporary little city. Uh, you can see some bartering going on, but it looks like actually, uh, like people are coming together. You see earthers, belters, mostly belters though, primarily belters. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some more scouting to see where a good place is for all of us. You know, once we have Wyatt, if we get Mikhail There's back, room. It's a, yeah, it's like kind of scope out a little place. I don't want us, I'd rather actually rather us be closer to any of the belters that are around. Okay. So we don't have to. You know. There's a lot of mixing. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the Earthers are kind of setting up first because most of the builders are working on the ship, uh, and right. the, there's only, the only builders that are setting up in here. Honestly, are like people coming from other ships. Right. Um, most everyone else here has already has their own crew quarters on the ship, whatever it is, like their own bunks. Um, but it's it's unbelievable how big this thing is on the inside. I mean, you know, it, you, you knew it was big on the outside, but it seems almost bigger on the inside. And there's the artificial sun in the middle, so like you're actually feeling what it feels like almost sunlight, uh, like heat. I mean, on you a little bit here, um, and such like that. But you can see people above you as you look up. Like there's people camping on the ceiling, kind of thing, a, a whole kilometer away from you. Kind of a trip. Um, I'll find us a place that's like not next to the bar because that'll be kind of loud, but not too far away from the bar because you know that's how we roll. Dingo, what's weird for you here is this is the first time in years where like even so your sensors are kind of working. You can you can ping out like like around like the surface. But when it goes up, it, you hit nothing back. Like it's too far out. Like like it's almost. It reminds you of being on Earth. Like with yeah. like under under uh, atmosphere. I mean, even on even on stations, it's just it's not like this. Like yeah, I've been can, on. Yeah, because your thing can ping out about 120 feet, no problem. And it's you don't even remember the last time you were in a room that was 120 feet. Even on Luna, there's ceilings. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll. If it helps me feel more comfortable, I'll just like I'll I'll dampen the expectations or just yeah. pull in the ping a little it, bit. It takes you a, well. It just takes you a while to uh, acclimate to it because it's a little disorienting initially. But like uh, there's like basically a whole dimension you're not seeing, which is kind of weird. But you're getting used to it pretty quickly. Got it. Because um, you can still see the floor. That's the big thing. Still see the floor. <laughs> um, all right. So um, you guys set up a camp, no problem. Uh, you can see that you have with you your crew. Uh, people are. Uh, Kind of moving around, setting up, trying to figure out what they're doing. Uh, the 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 crew of the behemoth is like passing out like food when they can. Uh, some people are getting medical supplies, mostly pain relief at the most. Like around here, if they're actually looking for medical stuff, there's down there. You do see a few people with casts on. They're kind of walking around. Um, looks like they have some just needs to be set. But people are relieved. Uh, people seem pretty happy here. Uh, like like they haven't been in days. Like they've been suffering on a ship or watching people die basically that look of relief kind of that is which is why everybody's coming together because it's like holy crap this is where we are right. this is what happened and i should mention marid is down in med bay actually he went with you wyatt uh took uh took uh mikhail with you and marid's gonna be working in the med bay he's gonna be contributing his skills there. they're uh, really happy to see another another med tech uh help out so 
have the Jan, Jan and uh, oh yeah, you guys made, it made our way down. Yeah, yeah you guys okay. make it down to the drum. Um, it's pretty impressive. You can. It's yeah. a little weird. Jan's kind of like kind of like walking a little funny initially, um, but he kind of gets his sea legs here, and he comes up and he sees you all. And he sees Zenny and he goes to hug Zenny. Yeah. Who oh, yeah. is Zenny? Look yeah, at what I found. 100%. I kinda, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, he's like, oh, he, he's like, I, I was, I'm so glad you made it. He's like, we. He's, I was a bad guy. I'm sorry. It was bad, Zenny. Glad you're not dead. <laughs> yeah, no. He's like, I made it. I, I, I lucked out. A lot of my, I got a few friends that didn't. He a good kid. Yeah, this one. Hey, uh, oh, hey, Cap. Uh, isn't this great? Everybody working together. We uh, p- putting all the supplies on the behemoth. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, one that spacewalk amazing dingo. Yeah, you see that? See that the stuff out in the space we're walking through? Yeah, you too, Wyatt. It was great. It was amazing. It was awesome. I agree. I mean, no, I didn't see it, but like, I get what you're. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, <laughs> jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. But yeah, just being out there. Oh man. Well, it was definitely. Different, uh, you know, it was a new view. I'll have to yeah. say that. You know, just being in this whole space, it's it's scary and exciting at the same time. You can go have to take, take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> still yeah. don't know what is going on. Yeah, but. uh we we all gonna figure it out. It look like we got all the greatest minds here in, in this this uh, ship, yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's just hope a, they all keep a cool head. I mean, you know, Dingo loves efficiency, and one thing that I bet from being here is like most stations have a perpetual like eight hour day cycle. So people sleep for eight, then they go to work. And meanwhile, the next crew yeah. sleeps for eight and goes to work. Like the, the concept of daytime is all different on stations and the behemoth is almost a station so i bet they have like a i don't know you tell me john oh, they would have, have they like would a, have a, it, it's a military ship. sleep cycle military ship would work like that period so yeah the builders are complete actually it's not very foreign for them at all there's um, no such thing as night really there's and just but, and that's what's weird versus... is that like like the belters see like this artificial sun that's glowing in the middle of this thing and they're like this is weird. What is that? And it's on a 24 hour cycle. That's what's, that's what's fucked up about it. It's on a 24 hour cycle where it goes dark and shit. So there is like a, a, a kind of a, a illumination and dimming of it. It's weird. You got to hand it to the Mormons. The decor, like the the impression for their interior design is pretty pretty baller. In the, in the, word, <laughs> in, in the words of, of our friend Jack Rabbit, who the hell is this blonde coyo on a horse? Why you got this guy on a wall? I don't I remember that. That was all yeah. the first episode. Yeah, that was so good. <laughs> Who's this blonde coyote on a horse? <laughs> uh, so like, uh, but yeah, there is like decor. You guys do see like some of the walls are decorated mostly towards the bridge, um, but not where like there's more practical elements. They didn't finish up uh, decorating everything, and this is definitely the last place they were going to decorate. Um, but the ship seems to be working. Uh, the gravity's working. Um, Yan kind of comes over and he goes, hey, Zenny, have you seen this? And he pulls up like his data pad and he pulls up this broadcast that's going on. Have you seen this mm-hmm. this radio free slow zone thing? And he pulls up this little like like image and it's like they're playing like it's like people like according to the, the display, it's people on the uh, Thomas Prince, like playing like instruments, like playing like flutes and trumpets and like synthesizers as a band. You're playing White Snake? The Thomas- no, they're not playing White Snake. <laughs> the Thomas um, Prince, that's the one that had all of the like- The Earthers, yeah. The, the Fru Fru Earthers. And okay. he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like this, uh, this one uh, reporter, she's been taking recordings, this, this, uh, and, and she's taking recordings of people, asking them to do art and everything and playing it for us. And she's pretty cool. She go around and talk to people. Hmm. Yeah, and you, and you can, and you, it kind of flashes over and you see her talking and she goes, this is Monica Stewart. Uh, that was uh, that was the makeshift band on this on the Thomas Prince. I think they're calling themselves the Princes of the Universe or something like that. Uh, they have, they are having an absolute blast, and uh, I'm now here on the Behemoth, uh, where I will be uh, broadcasting here and doing some interviews with the people coming over and hearing about their experiences in the Slow Zone, their lives, and talking to some of the OPA Navy. Uh, and we'll see what they all have to say. Everyone here has a story. Uh, but go ahead and enjoy this rebroadcast of, and it's like it, it, it's like a rebroadcast of some people playing music on the Thomas Prince, or someone doing poetry, um, some mm-hmm. interviews she has. Uh, Does this look like a belter, or is it like an a... He's an earther. How many damn earthers are there? Fucking... You do, rec- you do recognize her, though. She was uh, the reporter that came along with the Rathanante. Uh...
Hmm. And he's like, hmm. yeah, man, she's famous, man, but like, she's not on the Rossinante. Uh, Bull got her off the Rossinante along with her with along with her crew. That's sweet. It, okay. Yeah, the ones that the, you know, the ones that lived. Hmm. This is really. I don't know how I feel about this. See, because I don't know. I don't know if it's. Yeah, I, this could be calming to a lot of people to kind of see this happening and kind of, you know, put music out there and stories. It's also someone but, who's taken advantage of the situation to probably make themselves look better. There's that. So you know, it's like in the belt. What do we do? We don't automatically trust everybody that's coming in our space. Um, so, so it gets kind of it gets kind of awkward here for a moment. Actually, Dingo, let me hear about your your moment. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you. I just, I just, if I can do this without getting into earshot, I just recommend all of us staying off the grid if possible. You know, Monica Stewart is is fucking she's she's up there she's the laura liason of npr sort of a situation like <laughs> let's i i don't know what the ramifications are i just rather play it safe than make it on galactic news yeah i ain't talking yeah. to no reporter nobody nothing no story here for axa yeah but can we let's 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 keep a let's keep an ear out for what she might she might report shit before we know what's going on and she you never a, know what she's going to get into, so we can stay out of trouble, just pay attention, and then help where we're needed quietly. And you, you see her interviewing people. One of them's kind of like, she's talking to some belters, like some people that work on the ship, and she's like, you know, uh, how, how are you doing? Like, you know, what's what's going on with, like, the, you know, bringing people on? How's that going? He, and, like, the belters like, it's good, man. It's like, we're helping out people. That's what belters do. We help each other. And out here, man, we, we're all one. We don't know how to, like, none of us know how to survive out here, so we all got to figure it out together. That's the only way we're going to do it together. And so we're bringing people over. Uh, and she's like, how many people have you like brought? Have you helped like shuttle over? And he's like, oh, I don't know, probably like a few hundred. And she's like, wow, you know, that's that's something. And he's like, yeah, you know, I, I figure like, I, you know, I'm making a difference. And she's like, you know, is that what you thought you were going to do in the Navy? And he's like, I, I didn't know what I thought we were going to do. You know, so right. she's kind of like she's kind of doing this kind of personal thing, getting people to kind of realize and showing it to other people how like very human, very human element to it all. Um, all right, I'm gonna break with the storyline and I am going to take a risk, but given that she's a celebrity journalist, I'm gonna, can I, given the, given my computer skills, do you think it's possible I can somehow make contact with her iPad or her notebook? Oh yeah, you can, you can her... ping her real quick. Yeah, she's on the network. <laughs> she's on the network here real quick. Yeah. Yeah, you said if her. I... Yeah, if can... I'm confident I can get away without her catching me, I would love to see if there's, if keyword search Pope, if any of that shit comes up anywhere in her. Like, you, oh, you want to hack into her stuff. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I'm okay. trying to okay. be sneaky. <laughs> okay. oh. um, I love this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be dirty here. Okay. I thought Go you ahead. were trying to yeah. get nasty. I mean, she, Let's go. I mean she, she's a famous Earther journalist. Chances are she's got connections um, that... Are, might be worth looking into, unless well, well, the, well, the problem, I'm way off the rails well, here. Well, the, you can check her personal data pad and, and see if she has anything on there, but she's not connected to the network. The, nothing back on Earth is like, you guys can't talk to anyone outside right. the slow zone. Um, she's got no notes, so she's got no iPad. I mean, she, does, she, she, has her, she has her data pad, and you can certainly try to hack into it if you want to, but you would probably want to get in proximity to her to do so. You can't just you can do it to try to do it on the network if you want to, but... I'm gonna tell you this is not your forte. You you should you Never should pretend then. you should pretend to be like a long time listener, first time caller. Hey, I got a question. <laughs> Tap in, you know, hack hack the system. Yeah. All right, but, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye on her. Okay. I see opportunity here. You wouldn't have brought her up if there was an opportunity, but I'm, I'm well, gonna. Well, it's actually interesting it. because you guys are all kind of sitting there talking about and watching the thing and set up your camp, and you guys got your own person. You, you put your crate inside one of the tents to invite out. I'm pretty sure that's what you did. Not oh, yeah. Outside. Yeah. Um, and there's like food, no problem. People are setting up and people are talking to you and asking you what ship you're with and everything like that, too. And people are trading stories and such. Um, kind one of them kind of comes, one, one of the builders comes up to you, goes, goes to you, why? He goes, hey, man, like, um, are you are you with the um, the Martians? No. Who are you talking to? Oh, Wyatt. Uh, I just, uh, no, I'm with the Sinclair. Why is that? 
I, you're the only Martian I've seen on the ship so far. The, they don't want to come over. Yeah, they're a bunch of cowards, it seems like to me. Nah, yeah. it says, the, the Hammurabi says that they, they say they, they can't surrender to the enemy. That's what I hear. They think we're the enemy. I don't know. How are, how are you the enemy? What have you done to make you yourself? They just say we're another, we're another military force. That's it. I don't know, man. Bull's dealing with it, though. He's trying to come up with a way to deal with it. Talk to him, but I don't know, man. I was, I was curious. I thought maybe they came over and you were there, but I mean, you know, no. you ain't you ain't Navy. I can tell because they would you'd be in the, you'd be in one of them uh, suits they got. Yeah, definitely not. I'm oh, part you of the, the Navy. OPA, man. I'm with the OPA Navy. Wow, man. and Sinclair. Yeah, I heard Sinclair do okay, man. I heard you guys didn't do too bad in that in the incident. We lost a couple and we got some injuries, but we held together pretty well. We're a tough group. That's good to hear, man. Well, we could use all the help. We appreciate you bringing stuff over, man. Is there anything we can do, like, physically help? I mean, I don't want to right just... Right now, it's just, if you want to go and help uh, the food line or something like that, but uh, if you got any med techs, if you can send them down, down in the med bay, that'd be great. Um, do we but, have any med techs left? No, you have the one. No, we just <laughs> had the one. Yeah. one. He's already down there. Yeah, yeah and, I, you're, I, and you're injured, so... I'd be more than happy to go work in the food line and... Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can help out real quick. It's just mostly just grabbing, like, a box of food and going, like, tent to tent to distribute and everything that will feel yeah, set up. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that instead of sitting around. Okay. I don't I don't like that idea of sitting around. Why you start, moving, you start doing this real quick, and uh, you hear someone, uh, a woman's voice behind you go, uh, excuse me, sir? Nope. I'm just gonna keep walking. Go walking. Busy. Um, sir, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh I was kind of curious, uh, there were, are you with the, uh, OPA? Yep. Goes, That's all I got. I got. I got things to do. I can't. Do you, can't, do you can't ignore? Stop. Do you ignore? Yeah. Okay. Zanny, you I don't see, want to be rude about Zanny, it. You, but yeah, I was gonna. I was one hundred percent. Like as soon as this, Wyatt decided to, to go see, any anywhere else, I was like, I gotta keep it because yeah. like it's a Martian on a ship that is full of like people who not don't necessarily yeah, the, the, enjoy. There's like, like literally like eight hundred people on the ship, and there's one of them's a Martian. Yeah. <laughs> so like Zenny's keeping. Yeah, Zenny's keeping eyes. On Wyatt, so, so for see, Wyatt's sake. <laughs> so you see this woman with a, a cameraman behind her, a following following him, and you're pretty sure it's Monica Stewart. And she goes, and she kind of, she kind of like puts her hands up, and is like, I guess he doesn't want to talk to us, and she goes on to someone else, talks talking to them. Nothing personal, just got things to do. I'll just keep on. Okay. Um, Don't want to say something stupid. There's, there's, <laughs> the Jenny immediately goes back to to the dear, uh, what is it, Doctor Harper? Esther, Esther Harper. <laughs> yeah, y'all. yeah, and I'm like, God. well, to be fair with Monica Stewart, she came out here as part of a documentary clue with, with James Holden, and now stuck on this thing, so she's just trying to use the opportunity. So she's. Not yeah, I know, but to me, to... it's reading the same. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's it's an Earther coming to where belters are to tell stories about belters that aren't there so they're taking advantage of like yeah. the situation that belters find themselves mm -hmm. in and other people obviously this is a different situation yeah. but like i'll go up and walk i'm not going to interfere or talk i'm just going to stand <laughs> i'm going to noticeably stand close to zenny in a supportive position mm -hmm. okay yeah all right okay, i'm gonna say you doing all right zenny I'm just annoyed of, of what this and like like she's not approaching us right she's kind of like off she's just kind of going to the line bit. and talking to okay. people and seeing who wants to talk to her uh mostly talking to people that are helping out or uh people that look like they're I don't want to say like in rougher shape but they're not in like the best of shape or they're trying to like you know they have something to say or they want to say something um uh -huh. You know, she's asking though, what, what you know, we're recording all this. If there's something you would want to tell your tell your family back home, what would you want to tell them? Like she's kind of she's not broadcasting right now, but she's collecting stories, if you will. Right. I tell her we should get her an interview with McMichaels. That'll keep her busy forever. <laughs> Wax, yeah. don't get yourself cornered by her. Okay. Oh, oh no, no, no. no I'm no. talking to no. The, the interview will be titled "How It Is and How It Should Be." <laughs> <laughs> no, Dingo, it's just it's it's people like her just. They just find all the right times to just, I don't know, take advantage of other people. And by wrong times, I should say. Like, right now, like, I, sure, this might be interesting to someone at some point, but, like, I don't know. Just because like she's going to just take all of it and just turn it into some sap story and then take credit for telling the story of, you know, all these people out here. Is know? Monica still here? You can still see she's her walking here, around. She's, she's, like, she's, in the, she's in the vicinity. I mean, you can see her. Are you... She's out of your range of vision, but she didn't run. She seems like she's still in the area. I'm gonna find her real quick. 
Sh sure, I'll just I'll just approach with the. Yeah, you quick... can you can you can see like the person with the uh, the camera, and you can hear her kind of talking to people. But she's just asking general questions about like you know what do you want you know what do you tell people, uh, what do you want people to know about you, uh, you know stuff like that, and the like. She's just, she's just trying to data gather as best she can. Um, but yeah, she's just kind of hanging out there and such. Well, let me approach you and just let you know that my name is... Oh, she kind of looks at she's like, oh, excuse me. She's like, oh, hello. I had, I see that you're um, walking around trying to gain some content here. Can I ask what you're what you're looking for? Oh, um, well, we're Radio Free Slow Zone. Uh, we have a broadcasting rig, and we're just kind of broadcasting a message to all the ships, letting people kind of tell their stories, what's going on, making sure to share the information and the experience that we're all, sh that we're all kind of, I guess, in together. We're all in together. Are you, I want to, my name is Dingo. I'm a vice security chief um, from oh, Tycho Station. Yeah, I thought I recognized you. I'm from Luna, Earth. I right? work on, I was previously stationed on Luna. Yeah. I do want to remind you that this is a military operation and all of these people have jobs to do right now. Oh, well, and uh, if, it, if you're collecting a story based on how it is and how it should be, I really hope that your story focuses on the fact that all of these um, high budget space age war machines came out here and discounted the value of the OPA Navy being present. And I'd like to call attention to the fact that right now everyone is using the behemoth as uh, which turned out to be the most useful asset out here. So if your story contains anything, I hope you'll consider the value that the OPA Navy turned out to provide to the situation as it's going currently. Absolutely, she's like the, you know, the the, the behemoth has been invaluable. Uh, we had some of our crew members uh, get injured and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's been it's been great. Uh, and seeing how people reacted to it, uh, the Thomas Prince was having some problems and they brought a lot of people over. Um, and everyone I've talked to has been grateful to what the behemoth has pr provided for us under, um, she kind of takes a second under uh, Captain Paw. Do you think this? Do you think um, such an indisposable asset, such as uh, something as unexpected as spin gravity, will transfer to uh, value being remembered um, after if this is over, or do you think it's going to be written off later? It's, it's like, look, I I only report on the story and the history mm -hmm. that's going on. I don't tell it. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not the one to like to to unfold it. Um, but I mean, that's what we want to do here is we want to show when we get out of here, get out of here, we want to show people what it was really like going through this, this, his, this historical event and show how people came together. I think that's what's going to really show the value of the OPA Navy and, and what the Belters uh, really can do. That's fantastic. And I hope that that's the story that makes it, makes it all the way back on a tight beam to earth. So, I, uh, Bingo, I, I, I want to remind you. you that everybody here is military now. The OPA Navy is not a band of pirates anymore. Oh, We're no. an organization. And um, if people say they got work to do, that's what they got to do. You're talking to soldiers now. What was your question? Well, my, my, I think, so, but Dingo, you're not OPA. You're I go employee, like Fred Johnson. Um, mm-hmm. We have a contract with the OPA Navy. I'm working. I'm working with an OPA crew. Oh, which um, one? That's uh, that's classified as of right now. I don't know if I'm at will to if I'm at a disposal to say. Oh, very well. If um, it's public information, I'm sure you can find it in in um, ship logs and uh, complement registries, as I'm sure someone is. She's like that's really interesting to send. I mean, I understood they said they sent. Uh, the chief security officer Bola here, which is which is fascinating, um, but uh, and I can understand his role in this ship. It's a it's a it's a big vessel to, to run, but putting you on a smaller vessel that's interesting. I'll look well, that. the lines are being um, the uh, as the OPA proves itself, as the belt proves itself, the lines are being blurred 
as to who's from where and who belongs where and across what lines. And I think we're all working towards a future where people are put where they're most useful and people get rewarded for where their use is. I'm happy with the contract that I've been given and I'm been, I've been put to use where I'm the most useful. And I'm having a, uh, I think I'm very happy with, uh, with where I'm working right now. Yeah, she's like, well, there's one thing I know that we're all from and that's the other side of that ring. It's all that in common, huh? Are we still on the record right now? Uh, she kind of looks at her camera guy and kind of does a little thing, and she goes, oh, we can go off. This is a really sit serious situation, and I know how good you are at doing your homework. And I'll roll persuasion if I have to, but... Well, do you want to roll, roll persuasion? You also have seduction. And you're actually, uh, your seduction skill is actually quite good. Or try to flirt with they're, them they're, they're equal bonuses. You you can re-roll seduction if you fail. Because you're actually like have that. You actually have kind of a, a look about you. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that's that's an mm -hmm. option. If you want to try to flirt with sure. them more. I'll go with seduction then. Give Thank me, you. Me, for telling me. Okay, so yeah. give me all right, here we go, Jacob. Give me your, your flirtation with Monica Stewart. Does seduction have to be romantic? Because there are all kinds of seduction. I, mean, I, I don't think flirting necessarily, is, necessarily has to be romantic. I think you kind of, kind of like trying to build like a more intimate rapport. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily be like romantic or even sexual. It just can kind of be kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. you know let's, let's be real with each other here. You know? Listen, so I'll say, listen, Monica, one hour ago, I was floating through space in an e in an in a suit and i had no connection to anything half an inch from my face and i'm more than happy and the most important thing to me is that i'm back with people now where i can see and i can have information and the crew that i'm with right now are the only people keeping me alive and the 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 importance of sticking together is what's going to get everybody through this you are probably the most one of the most famous journalists in the solar system right now and i you're very good at doing your homework and i'm just letting you know that if there's any information you're coming across that could make a difference right now it would be a i can keep things quiet i'm really good at what i do but it would be a serious favor that the you could call in with the opa later if you had something valuable to tell me right now, I don't know if you're a I don't know if you're a church going person, but the Pope is a very powerful figure, and um, anything from religion to science to the economy, where uh, any information that you've got that can help us survive the situation. All right, would be give, give me that seduction roll. Let's see. That, get, so I see six. what you're doing here. Pope in the room. I see what you're doing here. You know, you're I like there. it. You get a plus six to this, and you get a reroll if you fail. All right. Dang. He's got intrigue. Production. Yeah. Twenty-one. Was Twenty-one. Was That's good enough. Okay. You kind of, you kind of, you kind of start dropping the stuff there and flirting with her a little bit. She kind of gets the innuendo. She goes, um, I could see, I could see the interest out here in certain. Figures like the Pope. I'll I'll let you know. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, unfortunately, I, I think I'm kind of in a in the same no pun intended boat as everyone here else. Where I'm mm -hmm. I'm I don't exactly have access to all my resources. Yep. Um, well, let me tell you, we've got <clears throat> food and med supplies, and some other things. We're a small band, but we've got. We, if if you're in a pinch, let me know. Mm -hmm. And if you need to call in a favor. With the with the OPA Tycho Deep State, you've got a card out there. But I'd love to know if you're uh, going to church anytime soon. Gotcha, gotcha. She's like, you, you really, you really are, you really are a student of bulls, aren't you? Oh, and not uh, just picking up on the, the tones here. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I can do everything bull can do, but with a little more finesse. Fair enough. Uh, you have now made a contact on the Monica Stewart. So this is someone you can call on if you, nice. need, if you need something. Okay. You got a, you got a name, expanse character as a contact. Impressive. Okay. Yeah. Um, one that's not a total dirtbag. All right. <laughs> okay. So, 
uh, she kind of goes on and she says, well, um, make sure that goes both ways. Uh, I'd love to like, get an interview with your crew at some point, ask them some questions. So perhaps we can arrange that in the next day or so. We can do that, okay. but it's at the discretion of the captain and don't bullshit me. If, uh, if we can't tell you, if we, if they can't talk, they can't talk, but we can, if there's something, you can choose like one thing that you really need and then we can, we can see what we can give you. What? All right, um, you get a uh, you get a little ping on your data pad. It's from Bull uh, saying like, if you want to meet and talk, I'll just say I'm good, boss. I'm looking out for my people. I'm letting you know I'm here if you need me. I saw I saw I saw a a, a pic of you laid out with your fingers cramping on an iPad. So tell me or a data pad. I guess I should stop saying iPad. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. But like your your man on the ground is here on the behemoth, so talk to me if you need, and don't leave me in the dark. And so just uh, feed me anything uh, you see that's kind of off-putting or weird. Uh, Do you trust Monica Stewart? He kind of sends back a LOL, and he's like, I think she's. I think he basically says her her main goal right now is to keep people calm, and distracted. So they don't like uh, let the by either talking to them or hearing out things and she's not doing anything out of line. Heard. All right. Don't worry about her. I'm out. Oh, uh, he thought we actually, they actually retrieved her from the Rossinante actually. But the crew of the Rossinante is still on board. I don't know what they're doing. Um, all right. So, uh, he's actually going through and, uh, saying that I, he kind of like says, I do have something I would like to talk about, talk to you in person about. So, yeah, you just make your way down to the, uh, way down here when you get a chance. On my way. Captain, I'm going to speak to Bull. All right. All right. Sounds um, great. The rest of you kind of are hanging out and such. Uh, I mean, it's pretty mellow day. Nothing's really going on. Uh, you go in to see Bull, um, and he is, like, laid out in a gurney, uh, no longer strapped in. The gravity's keeping him in. Um... He's kind of sitting up in kind of a thing here. Um, doesn't he just seems to be complete focused on this pad and such? Uh, you've seen this guy before. He's kind of a kind of a rough dude. He's an ex-marine, but here you see him laid out. You don't see any real visible injuries on him besides some standard bruising, but like he just looks like he's kind of sitting there in this gurney. Kind of looks up and he sees you, or he kind of looks up and hears you coming. Dingo is a dingo. Well. You're not in the chair I thought you were going to be in, but you're still looking pretty. It's like, Jesus Christ. He's like, I need, I need to have something to say. Look, um... You're still my boss, so... <laughs> like, any any, any dig on your job is a dig on my job. True enough. He's like, well, look, uh... Being my, uh... My man on the, my man on, my man on the uh, floor is going to be... Uh, you're going to be that now. He kind of looks down. He said, uh... Be good. Be good. He's like, I'll uh, take on whatever work you need me to, but right now you got, you got to respect my primary concern is the people I came here with. I got to nah. g- give an extra eye to them. Sinclair's a good asset. He's be one of our best assets, and we need to unload people. They can have, they can take on quite a few. Um, I trust them. They're they're they've they haven't lied to me yet. You you want to hear? He's like, you ready to hear some bullshit? This is complete. He turns off his data pad and everything. You you ready to hear okay. some? He's like, I'll open my mouth. Give it to me. Ashford, aside from refusing to spit up the drum, you ready for it? When as soon as I as soon as I suggest that to him, you know what he you know what he ordered. Put me in a medically induced coma. So, you're not in a coma now. What oh, immediately Ashford, happened? I mean, up. who else was in the room when that happened? Did, uh, did, did guns come out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. The guy. The Where guy's is he unhinged. Now? He's on. Un, he's unhinged. Uh. On, I mean, look, you know, I, I'm doing as much as I can here, but like, trying to order someone to a coma, that's a hell of a thing. Is look, he alive? Oh yeah, we got him locked up. We uh, we turned some of the livestock pens into a makeshift prison. Does he, do you think, Rick. I can do, I can do some digging. Do you think he has a support faction on the ship? I think, I think his uh, support went out the window uh, as soon as, uh, 
be sure that spin up the drum would save a lot of lives. He's like, look at all these people. You, you, you're in a room. You're like in like, I mean, there's like literally like 50, 60 people in this room that are like in different states of like injury that now are no longer dying. Like, all right. like he's like, this guy next to me was supposed to, I, I was ready to watch him die uh, all eight hours ago. Well, now we got, boss, we got a, we got a um, great situation. I'm glad where we, we are where we are now. I think just a little bit of counsel. I think you'll keep the support of the whole ship as long as you keep making choices that look out for people. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. You know, I mean, did, did Fred tell you? What did Fred tell you last thing he said to you before, before you left Tycho? Remember? He told me, make it work. He didn't, he didn't care. As long as I can make it work out here. And then Ashford, geez, he's like, I just can't believe the guy. And you can kind of tell Bull's like being a little confessional here. He's like trying to get some like pressure mm -hmm. from inside him off. And he's just like, I can't, I can't fucking believe it. I can't believe this guy. I mean, go that there, there's two things to consider. There's primary objective, which is to make it through alive. Secondary objective could be this is the moment that the belt saves everyone out here. So I don't want to make foolish decisions that'll put everyone at risk, but this is a this is a this is a <clears throat> a payoff opportunity if we show everyone we're, no. what we're made of. But look, we got, um, if you're looking for people on the ship, uh, to trust my, uh, uh, my guy Serge and Cora, uh, my security officers, great people to help you out. Oz, trustable. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, make sure you kind of, you have that, you have a backup network. Always make sure you got a backup plan out and next strategy. Um, I've told my people not to talk to the media. I mean, we're, like... you know, not bad. Not what are we doing worst. going forward? Like what we're where we're trying to help help the help the injured people, right? Well, yeah. Well, I'm trying to do as most I can from this bed here. Hopefully, I'll be out of I'll get out of here soon. Be able to go back to my office. So I can do a lot more good. But uh, taking my uh, doing my doing my best here. Uh, he kind of he kind of looks around and he sees he's like uh look, I got I got another appointment here. Uh, I gotta take. But it's good to my, see you, Dingo. All right. Last thing. Are you? Do you think? You think the uh, Mars and Earth, all their guns might come over here? No, we got. We can make sure they can enter whatever they. We can dictate what comes in and out. Any gun they try to fire outside the ship, it's gonna break. We're scanning everything they're bringing in. All right. Um, I don't. I'm not too worried about them. The Earthers have been really good about not bringing any weapons over. Martians are a different story. I'm trying to negotiate with them, but they don't seem to want to surrender. Um. But I, I'm working on a solution. That's actually he kind of points. He's like, "This is actually my appointment about that." And you can see that, like, um, there was like kind of like a like a, a, a belter with like a, a large crate with them, and several other belters are coming up. And you you recognize the person as being Sam Rosenberg, the chief engineer of the Behemoth. And he goes, uh, "Yeah, Sam here uh, got a solution." Sam, don't tell me that's how's that a box? He's like, "All right, thing, I'm gonna take care of this." Look, man, you go take care of your people, and uh, good to see you. Last thing, and I'll roll seduction if I have to. <laughs> We're best friends, man. Fred Johnson gives secret missions to everybody. I've got a couple of my own. You got any missions you're not telling me about? He said it last. He's like, Jesus Christ. He sent you out here on another mission? What the hell is he having you do? Look, I, I, like, he's like, look, I, I got nothing. Just make this whole thing work. This mission's too big for there to be little secret things going on. Gotcha. I'm not, I'm not a All right. spy. Alright, I'm out. I'll s let me know if you need anything. And he goes, what the hell is this? And this crate comes into his, like, kind of biased bed bay. Can All I right. can I, can I grab anything from, like, data-wise from that crate as I walk by? Uh, I maybe, know that it, looks like, it looks like just an engineering crate, like a, like, kind of a transport crate. Just generic. It's not weapons. Do I see a or... number? Like, a number on the crate? Crate number? Yeah, you, can, you, you pull a number on real quick. And you can, but as you come up, you can see that, like, I mean, they're going to open it up in a public area. They're not gonna okay. like it's not secret. It's gonna open up in the med bay, uh, but he seems to know the person and trust the person. So okay, all right. Um, all right. So he uh, uh, he kind of like um, you know, goes he goes off and does this thing. Um, the rest of you are kind of hanging out and such. What do you guys want to do your day? I'm just gonna keep working. Okay. I didn't keep on working, that. Waxer. What yeah. do you got? I feel it feel it reminded me a lot like Ganymede when we're helping out and stuff. So I, I definitely uh, helping everybody out, keep an eye on Yan, and then uh, yeah, just uh, trying to avoid the uh, reporter as much as I can. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, the, uh... I mean, I actually think I, I've been talking to Wyatt. Man, she should be reporting all these. If she's reporting all what's happened on the behemoth, she'd be sending it to the Martian ship, yeah? Then they know what we're trying to do here is more of a relief effort, not so much, a, you know, an enemy, yeah? Yeah, I agree, but the Martians are just very stubborn. Yeah, they would. doesn't they, fit their, their narrative, they're not going to do it. I mean, they're always <laughs> worried about something. Like, that's kind of the thing you realize why is like, They'll let their people die before they give up. Yeah. Which they probably wrong. got a lot of people dying on that ship right now. So I I wanna, uh, uh, the um, I'd like to kind of wander around looking casual, um, but also looking for other ship captain type people yeah. to see what I can kind of hear if there's kind of a, a leadership hangout where people there, are discussing there... things. Yeah, you would kind of walk around, and there's actually some tents that have been kind of combined. Uh, you see there's a few people that look like the religious leaders from the Thomas Prince are sitting up, like, kind of makeshift little, like, churches. It kind of reminds you of revival tents from Earth. Right, right, right. Um, but you, you, as you're walking around, you do, uh, one person, this uh, woman, uh, wearing kind of like a, like, like, it's not a naval uniform, but she has, like, kind of a patchwork of nice, nice clothing slash, like, uh, Thomas Prince kind of, like, gear on. And uh, seems to be kind of like smoking, like she's smoking cigarettes and everything out here. And she kind of comes up to you and she goes, "I ah, excuse me, um, that wouldn't happen to be a chocolatier's kit on your belt, would it? <laughs> Why, yes, yes, it would be. It wouldn't happen to have any chocolates in it, would it? Why, yes, it would. Oh dear, I'll you are, dig into it. you are the blessing. You are the blessing of this ship. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, hi, she's like, hi. Uh, bro, give me a current affairs test. I haven't had one of those in a long time. She is. I'm gonna give you like a four. Shit. I rolled double sixes <laughs> oh, and good. a five. All right. Not Plus a, my bonuses. Not a problem. Um, uh, Maria, can you roll a d6 for me? Because we have a churn, we have a possible churn event here. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. You, you, you recognize this woman as Tilly Fagan. Uh, oh. be of the of married to Robert Fagan on Earth. She's a very, very, very rich person. Like talking like on like Matt like Jules Pierre Mal's level. What'd you get? Oh uh, yeah, I, I know who she is. Yeah, for sure. Got two? two. Okay. She she goes, um, what would it take to get one of these delightful chocolates from Well, I tell you what, maybe you can kind of share some information that you might know from being around here, and I would be happy <laughs> she to laughs. uh Here's a little bit of a, here's a little tidbit of what I might have around me. Hmm, okay, so you pull out like, okay, so you go into reaching your belt. You got one piece left. I'm just gonna give it to her. Give it to her. Takes it and she looks at it and she's a, uh, hmm, very fine. She kind of smells a little bit. It really goes to like do the whole kind of like, doesn't just imbibe it like, I'm with it. So it's very nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and she kind of wraps it up and she says, I'm gonna wait for this after I get done with my cigarette. She keeps on smoking. Um, information. Well, <laughs> such, a, such a delight. You would, I would imagine you want more, but look, please, what can I tell you? I, Billy Fagan, by the way. Well, hi there. I'm Myrtle Cooper. Um, Myrtle Cooper. Yeah, Cooper. you probably Is know that. Is Admiral Cooper your father? Yes, indeed. Oh my is. God. She's like, I had, my husband and I had dinner with him six years ago. Delightful man. Excellent taste in cigars. I think, um, I think Robert had him out for golf or something one time. What? So you're not in the. You're not in the. I didn't see you in the Prince. You're not. In a, she kind of looks at you for a second. She's like, you're not wearing the UN uniforms. What uh? What brings you out to uh, the slow zone? <laughs> she kind of laughs. Well, you know the. Well, you know how it could be. The military's all like state and orders. Oh and, my god! Oh my god! You know, Wait! Oh my god! You're OPA. Damn. Admiral Cooper's kid is OPA. Oh, Robert's Robert's gonna love this. This is this is good. This is good. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. This yeah, is this, is, this um, and the chocolate. This is worth the trip. Myrtle, oh, you excellent. you tell me whatever you want right now, and I will I will be more than happy to oblige here. What what do you what what are you interested in? Uh, well, it looks like I mean you've been you know you've been with the prince for a while. How long have you been here? 
Oh, we we came over not too long ago. I, I'm just kind of taking a break. My my good friend, um, uh, Anna. She's she's doing her little. She's got some work right now. She's just taking care of some things. But I'm just off looking around. I'm trying to secure. A, I got a, I got a lead on some lemonade. So I, think, um, I think I'm gonna wait for your your chocolate to go with that. Yeah. Fresh lemonade, like real lemons. She laughs. She's like, I don't think it's fresh, but I think it's gonna be well, <laughs> good enough. It's fresh as it can get. Well, it's just like my chocolates. They are fine, but uh, you know our shop is over on series. So in case you like series. this, series. Oh wow! Have. What what took you out of series? Well, that's where my wife lives, and you we own a, a shop belter? there. I did. Admiral I Cooper's know. little girl married a belter. Oh my god. Uh, well, he doesn't quite know that yet. Oh. <gasps> Oh, so, this is so this, this is, is this is fresh goss for you. You know, I don't think any lemon on this ship is this juicy, so I'm enjoying this. So please, yeah. So, uh, and my little sister, you know, my little half sister, she's you know, she wants to come out here, but uh, I've been kind of telling her how hard and terrible it is out here. Uh, that, that's all I did was I Robert donated a bunch of money to Esteban's new campaign to get him reelected. Oh and sure, I, they put oh, me on yeah. this thing, and I was like, let's go out and do this thing, let's go out and do this ring, and. I met some wonderful people. Uh, it's been a little hard here at points, but um, uh, we're getting through. I'm making, I'm making do. Yeah, it seems like he could be bought, you know? Um, and bless his little heart. You know, I could see how he would be good about you coming out here, but uh, it's it's really interesting to, you know, see somebody from home out here because mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, there's plenty of people on the Prince of uh, Means. Um, you know, there's a few a few religious, like, you know, folks, and some are really bland, and some are really interesting, and some are fun, and some are not. But, you know, it's you better just... better keep, keep you on your toes. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, Myrtle, you said I owe you some information. What what uh, what might you want to know? Oh, I'm just kind of interested, um, since you kind of are the kind of person who has the pulse on everything happening. Oh, I try. Because, you know, that's that's who you are, and that's what I know about you. So, do you think there's anything that I might need to know that maybe other people don't have? You know, any kind of information like that? Anything that's juicy that's happening? Oh, just, um... Uh, well, my friend got back here. Uh, she took a little excursion, a little detour. Um, and uh, apparently the crew of the Rosanate is on board now. Really? Yeah, James Holden, I think he's still, I think the Martians are still playing with him, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the they, little, little, little kerfuffle on the Rosanate, apparently. There was a um, uh, like a little uh, Someone, someone took a took a stab at them. This whole that whole explosion, everything turns out. You're never gonna believe who did it. You're never gonna believe who, who did, did it. it. Who did it? You have to tell me. You, you remember? Do you know? Uh, you know Jules Pierre Mal? Remember? It? Locked yeah, up yeah. now. Oh yeah. So so remember Holden was trying. Uh, Holden uh, Holden's, uh, Holden's little friend Naomi was trying to tell us it was like Julie Mao and Julie Mao did all this stuff. Yeah yeah yeah. Clarissa, the younger. No. Yeah. Clarissa How? Mao. Clarissa wait, wait, wait. Mao blew up a ship and attacked the crew of the Rosinante trying to kill James Holden. Can you believe it? How would she even Well look, what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is like I'm discovering so much about daughters of rich kids from Earth today. And it's it's amazing. It's very overwhelming. Well, but thank I'm you more for contributing to this fun time. I'm happy I get help, I guess. But uh, wow, that is interesting. Yeah, they're in pretty bad shape. Uh, I, I guess a few of the members got hit pretty hard by the the sudden stop, and uh, yeah, rumor is is that uh, Clarissa did a hell of a number on the on the other crew members uh, that were there. But James is Holden's still doing this this silly celebrity thing in the Martians. They seem to want to have the best, the biggest celebrity. So whatever. That guy. That guy. That guy. Yeah. Jeez. I, don't I mean, know. He, he, he can't help but just put his head in everything, he, right? He, you know, he's cute. He's, he's he's a little photogenic on the camera, but I mean, come on, buddy, just like. Well, he's dude, pretty, but something. I'm glad I'm not Naomi. That's all I gotta say, because oh, I wouldn't want to put up with him. Can't imagine. Look, you know, at least uh, uh, 
at least at least your wife chose a good a, a good earther to to, to uh, be involved Aww. with. Well, look, this has been an absolute delight, um, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get back to this before my uh, lemonade source evaporates. Oh, indeed, indeed. Um, so, why don't you look me up later when we're all out of this? Yeah, and, tell me where your uh, maybe and I'll, I'll be right by. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and I'll we'll make sure that. you get a. I'll, I'll make sure to share a little bit of the a uh, little swig of something good I have. I have uh, brewing. Oh, right. that would be lovely. All right, and she. She kind of saunters off and goes off someplace else to go secure her extremely expensive lemonade. Uh, hey, John. The- quick, quick insert. This doesn't need to be role played long. I'm going to send a quick uh, message to uh, 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 <clears throat> Tedwin. Oh, on- yeah, Tedwin. I forgot Tedwin's letters like, came with you guys. On the I know. We forgot, we we forgot, forgot about Tedwin. Tedwin. He's kind That's of, his uh, job to be sneaky. Yeah. His job is to make people forget he's there. Yeah. Um, I'll just say, Tedwin, do you have time for a task? Yeah, sure. Yeah. We've been working together a long time. I need you to collect a few random stories with selective data of two categories. One harmless to us and one that possibly gives up shit to us. But I need you to look for some data, some stories that you think would be useful to a journalist. Sure, no problem. I'll be I'll be yeah. uh, happy to get some. Um, I'll ask for it later. Bye. All right. So yeah, he goes and he's he goes around talking to people and everything that try uh, try to get insert himself in his conversations as best he can. Um, all right. So moving on. Or I just I just meant stuff like from our records being the chiefs of security on Tycho, like like mm. cl- classified data that we just have. I mean, in you our have history. like the, you do have the crew when you guys busted that uh, that smuggling thing. Uh, that mm-hmm. wasn't terribly published. The details of that weren't going on, but it, it was never noticed that, like, it was never in the public record that they were going back to Earth, uh, specifically for Baltimore. That's kind yeah, of a juicy so tidbit. If he can compile some yeah, some sure. okay. some restricted data for that and just make it ready for me to share if I decide to. You got it. You got it. Okay. Um, you all uh, kind of like you know uh. You know, kind of uh, stuff's just kind of moving along. Stuff's happening. Uh, if you guys have something specific you want to go into, you help out. You work as much as you can. Wyatt, Waxor, Myrtle, Zenny. Um, but as far as like, they seem like they have enough hands to keep everything moving. Um, it seems like the kind of like honeymoon phase of this, like the kind of initial thing, kind of wearing off and such. Uh, not like people are fighting, but like they're kind of realizing they're in it. They had that moment of relief as they got to the like you know to the shores of salvation. But now they're realizing, well, what do I do next? I'm, all right, we just going to until we run out of food and air. Um, and uh, the, um, yeah, so do you guys have anything you want to kind of like look into? Hmm. I got nothing off the top of my head other than I'm just going to help until I get told to do something. I mean, unless important. there's something, yeah, a way, I mean, I would just see if there's something I would notice about helping figuring out the current problem about the orbits and, uh, you know, not moving ships and anything like that. I mean, that, everyone's, but... they have like the top engineers here working on that and no one's <laughs> like figuring out. But as far as like the mechanics of the ship goes, um, Waxor actually, you're, you're noticing a little bit, you, you were put onto a channel of like, of like mechanic stuff and you're noticing some like, there's a lot of chatter right now about like energy redistribution on the ship. Like they're going to start running extra conduit to certain systems. Mm. Um, like there's a bunch of work orders kind of coming in. Um, they're per- and they're pretty specific. These are kind of things beyond your technical capacity. They're not even oh. like uh, you worked with Yan for a little bit. They're beyond Yan's capacity. They're not wet. They're it's kind of weird how they're qualified, but they're like really specific requests. Could I send a like a a ping over to McMichaels and Drax and yeah, just have them? Yeah, just have hey, uh, yo, yeah, uh, oh yeah, this is a. Uh, Wax, yeah. uh, I'm gonna send you over a channel some chatter about what's going on in the slow zone right now in this uh, area. Um, maybe something that both of you could think about. Okay, and they they kind of go through it and uh, like McMichael comes back and he goes, "What the hell are they're putting a bunch of power to the? All I can see is like they're pushing a lot of power to the top of the ship. Are they pushing power to the bridge? Is the bridge having problems?" I don't I mean, know. You, like, you would have heard about something like, like, and Drax, like, yeah, you would have heard about like the bridge having like power issues. Like that would have been a number one issue. You would, everyone would have heard about that. What the hell are they know. doing? 
I don't know. You got any guesses? It, you, you... He's like, show it to Zenny. See what Zenny how like Zenny might know something. Yeah, yeah, good, good idea. Yeah, I, uh, hey Zenny, uh, come over here. I want you to check some out. I, I found some chattering going on, and uh, the the moving energy sources all over the ship, and uh, see what you think about it. Yeah. And it's all like, it the med bay or whatever. It's all like conduit redeployment. Like they're redeploying the energy systems in here, right? Yeah, like that's what seems, but you're like, what are they pushing it to? Like, what, what the fuck is up there? They're, like, yeah. there's no, it's like it's like the level you would need to like power rail guns, um, energy. But there's no rail guns on the ship. Um, mm -hmm. Zanny, give me a uh, you can give me a technology test real quick, and let's see if you can uh, figure this out. Yeah, I took off all the rail guns. I don't understand. <laughs> can I can I assist her? Uh, not, yeah, so so present. you can see that like Waxor and Zenny are kind of talking to you, chatting with each other. Do I have the kind of clearance on the behemoth that might help see deeper? No, I mean okay. these are all work jobs. Uh, you can ask Bull Fair. if Bull wants to give you clearance. But um, so right, okay. So power is suspiciously being diverted to the top of the ship and yeah, especially like to railguns. Well, no, like it's not to the railguns. It's like the amount, almost yeah, the, the amount, amount you would need to like run a railgun. Okay, within that range, there's a lot of power. Um, Zenny, what'd you go to your technology test? Uh, 16. Okay. What was your lowest die roll? Three. Three. Can you push that to a five? Spend five fortune for yeah. me? Okay. All right, spend five fortune. <laughs> yes, hesitantly. Yeah. Hey, you got you got cool. back like a bit earlier, so you should... Oh, I know. I was at one, if you'll remind... You'll, you'll remember. <laughs> <Those at> home. <laughs> All right. Those are home. I was at one, so, so now I'm up to you start, health. You start going through this, and what'd you go on the drama die? Five. Five, okay. You start going through this, and like, they're redirecting a shit ton of energy to the communications laser on the behemoth. Like, they're overrun. They're gonna like over, uh, not overpower it to the point where it's gonna explode, but like, they're like running a lot more energy to the, to the comm laser than you would expect. And it looks like the, the laser, this comm laser can take it. Like, it's actually a pretty like, it's a really advanced comm laser. It's meant to like, shoot from beyond the solar system and shoot like laser missiles back to earth and shit they might be trying to get some communication out of here what you mean what the the send all the energy into the calm yeah i'll like point at some yeah probably things that don't mean anything and i'll say yeah the 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 divided diverting all the power up to the the giant calm laser that they got and, and I'm to be, gonna, yeah. to be clear, they have a lot of extra energy because they're not running the thrusters on the ship. Like, the drives aren't running, so there's yeah. plenty of power. I'm going to send that back over to uh, Drax and McMichaels on the channel. Just kind of have everybody get the same Yeah, they, they kind of look at it like, I mean, yeah. from what we've gathered and what, like, everyone's been trying, no one's gotten, a, like, a, a signal through the... doesn't matter how hard the laser is, it, it'll get distorted coming through the, the ring gate. It won't, mm -hmm. like, work. Um... Do you want to like ask Dingo's opinion on this? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, because. All right, Dingo, you can see there's been orders put in, uh, to like for redistribution of conduit and everything like that to basically upgrade the conduit, the amount of power that can be pushed into the comm laser. Do I recognize the clearance level of the orders? Oh, it's like their chief. It's like the chief engineer, like the per Sam Rosenberg. That, the guy I saw talking to Bull. Yeah, the, the woman. Yeah. So this is. Second from the top level orders. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty top level orders. And uh, yeah, you go through it and you can see that, like, it's like an order coming from, like, Pa and Bull. Okay. I'll just send, like, a. I'll, real quick, I'll send a priority, like, text. Mm -hmm. If it can catch his eye, I'll say, What's going on with the com? La what are you doing with the com laser? Okay, and com then I'll. He gets back to you immediately and says, uh, We're going to get the Martians to come over here. Why? They got Holden. We need you Holden. Want to you want to invite a militant society on board the ship? We're going to, and he kind of comes back, he's like, we're going to get a, mili a militant society, a, mil a bunch of military people to surrender to us, and but they're going to be cool. We're not too worried about them. They've actually, they got a lot of wounded, and, and we're going to make a good faith effort to them, but they can't, uh, Martians don't give up. I don't blame them. And we're going to make sure that they uh, they have a reason to surrender. Well, the the thing separ the thing keeping us safe right now from their mass numbers and technology is space. If you let them in here, you're giving up a bunch of your uh, s security. They're not going to bring anything on here that we can't deal with. 
and and they're not gonna they're not gonna threat they're not gonna come over assaulting us while they're bringing uh, thirty wounded soldiers over. I don't believe you, but you're in charge, and I'll follow orders. I've got I I've been talking to their captain. And I think the I think they're getting desperate over there. They won't admit it, but they can't. I don't think they can admit it. Ask your ask your buddy White about it. If if uh, if, if uh, Marsh is ever gonna admit they want to give up, he'll tell, he'll, tell, he'll tell you straight on it. All right, I'm gonna. Re- Right, out. Yeah. Boop. It kind of comes back, and, and yeah. So, I just yeah, tell. So somehow I just gonna, tell that story to my people. Yeah. Only. So somehow bulls saying they're going to use the calm laser to get the Martians to give up. They're making that into a weapon. Yeah. How can you make that into a weapon? What can they? Can do? I? Can I retroactively roll like a persuasion or something just to see if I think he's bull is lying to me? He's not lying to you. Bull okay. doesn't lie to you. Unless he hates you, he's not lying to you. Wait, Waxer, what did you say about making the Comlays into a weapon? Yeah, Zenny here, she, she says you're putting all the energy into the calm, yeah? And then... Yeah, unless it's... Unless it's... Could, do I... Do I... So, They're okay. just putting energy into it, right? There's not any sort of, like... Um, like, is make... there any sort of movement with well, it's the... On, it's, on, it's on, like, a swivel, so it can move around it and, right. like, and hit, and, and like target it... whatever it needs to. It, are precise. we able to are we able to see if it is currently pointed in a specific Martian direction no, or towards the no, ring side? Okay. No. But like so, theoretically, do you think that that can happen? Yeah. The answer is yes. So the problem with laser weapons in the expanse is they don't exist because you have to keep the laser focused on the thing for a while. But it shit's all moving. Shit ain't moving. Yeah. So you can cut. If you can it's start, powerful enough. And you can cut through the the. It cut through a hole if you focus the laser on it long enough. So I took off all the weapons, yeah? But then... Took for the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, well, they have a new weapon. They don't have a weapon. It's a, it, no, yeah. no, it's a piece of shit. It's going to like... Like, they're going to be like, we're going to burn through your ship over the next hour. It's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah. It's slow death. It's going to be yeah. a very slow would, burn, but it will be a burn. But wait, wait, Dingle, why would they... Why would they threaten the Martians to try to save people? Yeah, what? So we're, they're going to allow Martians to enter the behemoth with wounded. Meanwhile, it- they're heating up the comm laser. I mean, the rest of the navies are not going to be ignorant of this. They can see what's going on. They're going to figure out just as fast as we did. I'm going to ask doesn't- my favorite Martian, yeah? Why, <laughs> uh, Wyatt, what's... Yeah, what what's is... Your, what's your take? You, I mean... You, I don't so think why, I don't think the Martians are I so don't think he's lying to me. Martian protocol goes like this: they don't give up unless they're under immediate threat of annihilation. Yeah. And the we're... problem is that there's no weapons out here, so there's no reason for them, and they can't. They're not going to bring their wounded onto an enemy ship. Is oh, how they yeah. view it. And so this is kind of like safe face. Bulls give them. They basically when they go back home, they can say, "We we had to surrender, or we would have all died." It's literally the only chance they have to save those people and save face back on Mars. Is that's bullshit? Is Bull threatening them with the comm laser? I didn't ask Bull oh, about yeah. the comm laser. Oh, I yeah. should have. Is bet. he threatening them or is he just giving them? Uh, the... That's my. That's that's what I'm putting together. Yeah. What, what does he gain from killing a bunch of Martians? I don't the... think he's actually gonna. Well, I don't know, Dingo. You tell me. Is this something that he would actually say to do? What this you, is what fucked you... up because I said what's going on with the com laser, and he said Martians are coming over. So I missed the fact that he didn't actually answer my question. Martians are coming to the behemoth, but he didn't tell me what he's doing with the com laser. I'm gonna hail him again, yeah. and I'm gonna say, <clears throat> "Good diversion." Wait, what does the com <laughs> laser happen to? How like, to do what? Do, what does weapon? I, I can tell your weapon. Like what a, does that have he, to he do? Like with a thing basic, it's like Martian. It's Martian military protocol and surrender. And basically, it's like unless they have a reason to surrender, they won't surrender. And the only way they'll come over here if, if, is if they surrender. Why does he want them on board? Is he because trying he to, wants to save their lives? All right, all right. Like he basically says, it. "I'm trying to save their lives." Like they, they're, they're willing to let their people bleed out because they want to save face and they're too proud. If I give them a reason to come over, they can come over and they can be like, we surrender. He's like, I'm not going to hold them prisoner. I'm going to let them... Sorry I wasted your time. No, no, he's not. He's just kind of like, you're kind of seeing how he's thinking through like everyone else's Mm -hmm. like thought processes. And this is why Bull's good at his job and probably why Fred sent him out here. 
once again, Fred's order, make it work. Yeah, okay, awesome, I'm, I'm out. Guys, I think, keep on your toes. I think Bull is being smart right now. I think he's trying to save Martians because he knows he has to threaten them to get them to let us help his wounded. I think this is like, theoretically, a, me, a media stunt or like a saving face stunt, so. I it's hope that works. I home. hope that works, and they don't come over in there. The I hope. Suits, yeah. <sighs> that laser. All it fires. takes is if it, it, it takes one one person with just one tiny ounce of hatred towards Martians, or one happy trigger finger, and. I yeah, mean, why? Why it, your thoughts on that is like if they're gonna try to tangle with like one Martian Marine, and you also know they have recon Marines. Like these are like power armor. Even outside of the armor, they're they're bad motherfuckers. To uh, to quote the show, uh, you know that that Martian Marine could feed you that gun if she wanted to. Um, like they could probably take control of the ship if they really wanted to, but they probably won't. I don't see them doing anything like that. I think it's I think it's to save face back home. Yeah. I think they need to the help. I don't think they want to see their people die, and this is the only way that they're allowed on this ship. Yeah, we all we all in the same. No, this is the only. Right th this is just uh, never mind. Okay. And well, I think nice. Zenny's just gonna like Zenny's frustrated with this whole <laughs> situation. It's just gonna like go Thanks. and like I don't know, pick up something and move it around. Hey Zenny, <laughs> do what you gotta do, but yeah. we're 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 gonna get we're gonna stick together, okay? Um, Hang in there, yeah. Team, let's just stay close. Nobody go on solo missions to the other side of the ship no. while this yeah. happens. We're we're about to bring a bunch of soldiers on board so from another action I'll, I'll, so you, I'll tell you, mcmichaels and drax just to monitor it monitor yeah. her. and they, they watch it and you can see the skips coming over from uh the, the hummer aubrey and it's i mean there's like two skips coming over um you can see that you guys can monitor the security feeds and everything it's not a problem for you can go uh and it's like you know like about two dozen martians coming over uh, they're still able body like they're still able to walk around and then there's probably about like another equal amount that are heavily wounded, broken bodies, stuff like that too. People are doing well. Um, you're guessing also, you know that a ship that big has quite a few more people than that. So you're guessing quite a few died before they got here. So 48, you said two dozen yeah, healthy, about, two dozen about, wounded. There's about, four, there's about 48 people total, about half of them are wounded. All right. And including their captain. And you can right. see that Bull goes and meet them. Bull is actually out of bed. <laughs> Okay, that's not a lot of people on a giant ship. No, you guys it's got still, about eight hundred. <laughs> I don't know. It's one. It's one SEAL Team Six away from like making something specific and tiny happen. So I don't know. Whatever. Bull knows what he's doing. And and you can see on the security feed, uh, they have brought their power armor over to escort James Holden. But you see that Bull's kind of like you guys got to take it off. You got you can't bring it in the, into the place. If you wanted to bring your wounded on, you can't wear it in here. We're gonna confiscate it. The bull goes and like he gets he secures everything and they give up all the armor they give up their weapons and everything. Um, man, this guy he he know what he doing man. Same guy. Who's right there it shows that nothing stupid is gonna happen if they're willing to give up that power armor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or, let me uh yeah. I'll, I'll put that away for you all. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. yeah you see bull. You, you see bull like go and like he has he has his security officers Surge and Cora his two trusted people like bringing it into a security office and they're locking it up in like you know the armory and everything. So it's all locked down. And the uh, the Martians kind of come through, and they end up in the they end up in the drum with you guys. They end up in like the camps, and they're kind of hanging out and just kind of watching. They're stick, sticking to themselves. Um, I look I look big, and I watch them. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, puff up. <laughs> you, you, okay, you go to puff up a little bit. You, you know, some of you guys are kind of like you know, let's, let's be a badass and yeah, just you know, wary. Okay. Okay. I'll um, hey, I'll I'll take some food, and I'll ask Wyatt to come with me, and I'll just. I'll just talk to them like fully, like like nice. Like I'll just be nice. I'll just ask them how they're doing, if they're okay. I'll let Wyatt Dingo take the being lead. Dingo being nice. It's no, but like, well, Dingo's nice. like corporate nice. Like, <laughs> how you doing? You okay? Like, you yeah, get, yeah. Like it's he's saying nice things, but he's got like a robot face. Yeah. I'm like, gonna be honest with you, Dingo. I probably shouldn't go with you. They're gonna think of me more as a traitor than a <laughs> yeah. Oh, Might be a glad bad I asked. Idea. I don't know. Flash him your tattoo, man. Yeah. <laughs> Flash him your tattoo. 
Never mind, Wyatt, stay stay left, stay back. I'll yeah, we don't they, have to role play it, but I'll like just talk to hang out, people give them some food, med, whatever. Yeah, and they kinda of get the gear. Wyatt can, they listen, kind of, Wyatt can listen to my conversations. They kinda of stay in line and everything, and uh, you know, it's pretty um uh you know, it's they seem to be doing pretty well. They're kinda of keeping themselves kind of watching out what's going on here and everything. Um and you can see that like the, the Marines are kind of standing there. They're just kind of wearing like Martian out, uh, you know, uniforms and such. Uh, none of them are armed. They see you coming up and they're one of them kind of nods at you. What's uh, they help you out? Nothing. I'm, I'm a I'm an earther. I work with um, one of the OPA ships here. I just thought you guys could use I know you got food but I just thought you could use a little bit of a gesture of someone giving you something so I've got some med and some food here okay yeah thanks now we, we got plenty out here mm -hmm. uh who, who you said you're with OPA Tycho Tycho Station oh, security as an earther yeah I'm gonna kind of look around mm -hmm. our guy um, well, we ain't got much to much to say. We're just kind of, uh, I guess, I don't know if we're we're not prisoners, I guess, but I guess we're uh, on an enemy ship, huh? I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. I, everyone's scared out here. I know you've got your own people. You've got your stuff to look out for, but um, I think the way we're all going to get through this is if we look out for each other instead of worry about borderlines and factions. So. Do what you gotta do. I don't want to annoy you, but I'm taking my data pad and like, here's my contact. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, if you need, if you need to reach across lines, I'm around. Yeah, man, your guy Bull, uh, he put us in a good position. I, I respect his maneuver. The, the captain He's, was, the captain was, uh, I can understand. The captain made the right decision. Mm hmm. He's, he's a good guy. And I think everyone's on edge, but if you, if you if you dig deeper, we're all just oh. trying to make no, sure. We, but take we lost. Uh, he's like, no, I, I had a. Well, I, I was lucky. I was sleeping when it happened, and uh, up. And a lot of friends are gonna have a good chance of living now, getting home. So, mm -hmm. we appreciate what the. It's not exactly how I thought I'd be a prisoner of war. Got to laugh. You're not a prisoner, man. We're not, nobody knows what's happening right now. But anyway. I don't want to take up your time. I'll he let you guys. To, he goes to shake your hand. He's like, What's your name? Uh, Dingo. Dingo Juarez. He goes to shake your hand. Um, he's kind of a pretty. He's a pretty. He, he's he's a Martian Marine. This guy is like a bad motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. You you think he could give he could he could give Waxer a run for his money in a fight? Uh, Wa Waxer starts to make his way over. Okay, you call him over. You see like and they yeah. see the tallest belt. You see this like six foot two Martian like badass guy standing there, seeing you coming up and uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's with you. Was it Dingo Yuki with you? Yep. Yep. He's yeah. Guy. Hey, I Waxer. Said, I said, welcome aboard. Hey, maybe you could help uh, hand out some stuff to the people who are injured. And I oh, kind of like had our, him. We're going to get our shelter together yeah. and uh, make sure we got space to sleep here and not bother too many people. But uh, the, okay. captain, the captain, from my understanding, is having some conversations with, with uh, your captain here. Uh, well, you guys uh, know where the bathrooms are, everything? It's like, well, I'm not too worried about it. I think we'll figure it out. Yeah. I'll just say, uh, yeah, I'm Waxer, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you need any, uh, if you want to help out with anybody who's hurt, yeah. Uh, come and we over sent, to we sent our, our med tech went with our injured, and uh, I right. think that's the best we can do. We brought over a few medical supplies, what we could spare, but uh, I'm there's saying uh, you, no though. one. I'm saying you, you got two arms, two legs, yeah, you looking good. <laughs> if you want, you could help the rest of us, yeah. Well, we'll like I said, we're going to get our shelter set up, and once, once we're secure, then we'll... Uh, We'll see what we can do for you guys around here. But it looks like you guys got a lot of help around here. Like, yeah. You want any help setting up your tents? I think we got it. I just saw it'll be good. Uh, it'll be a good cool. refresher for those of us that haven't been uh, plant side for a few for a few months. All right. Respect. All right. Good. We'll send that report over. Have a good one. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You bet. It's good. It's good talking to y'all. <laughs> and he's just kind of like he doesn't. You can kind of tell this guy. Uh, uh, we tried. Dingo. Well, like he's just kind of <laughs> off put. He's like, I'm in a shit situation. And I'm trying yeah. to get the best of it. I don't try to fuck with anybody. You don't know yeah. who to trust, and you're yeah. technically in an army. You gotta, you gotta keep your line secure. I get it, but we like we sent. What's more important than actually helping is sending the gesture, and they yeah. got it. So we're 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 good. Yeah, and they seem to like they're not being like you know put at gunpoint or watch. You can tell though there is a security detail on 
the behemoth that kind of patrols through and they have definitely been spending they do spend a little bit more time watching the martians and others but they're not like going through their stuff and patting them down and like talking to them kind of walking past them a little yeah, bit lower give, give them some space okay. yeah they're giving them their space so okay um anyone else uh Anyone else? Want to uh, go talk to the Martians? <laughs> Just kidding. Make them feel at home. You want to talk to the Martians? <laughs> um, or it, it's pretty nice. Late, yeah. Later in the day, actually, when you're working, why one of the Martians comes to the line and he goes, uh, "That's a nice tattoo." Uh oh. <laughs> it, it very much is. Like, do uh, you serve on the Donager? No. <laughs> you just a fan or what? Big fan. By you, yeah, uh, you know it, it was a real tragedy. I, I actually was uh, set to deploy on it uh, about in, in about two months before it went under. Uh, losing losing, uh, you know, Captain Yao was a real blow to the military. But uh, we're, um, you know, but I, I appreciate uh, people that that remember, you know, those that served and those that protected us. Yeah, are you holding up here with everything going on? That's all right, you know. It's, it's you know it's not much not much different than being under a dome I suppose, but uh, you know I, I guess we're just trying to work, figure out what we're gonna do here and how we're gonna survive. Um, I'm hoping uh, we didn't bring everything over from the uh, Barambi, but and uh, we'd like to go take a look at some of the other ships and the other ships in the Martian flotilla to see if they're operational. Or not. I think most of them are. Um, I think most of them are dead now. Kind of takes a second, like thinking about that. Yeah, I understand. I, it's not gonna be easy for. So you, he's like, you're a Martian. Are you out here? Who, who are you out here with? You one of the support staff on the the Thomas Prince or what? Let's, uh, we can talk about something else. I don't think uh, we need to spoil the. Make a persuasion check, man. That's, that's some bullshit. We can talk about the question. Yeah, avoid the question. And you're, you're pulling the Han Solo. This is a boring conversation anyway. <laughs> like, 14. 14. He's kind of like gives you, he kind of looks at you kind of suspiciously, and he's like, yeah, okay, well, let me get my rations and I'll be on my way. He kind of takes the pack for himself here. Nice. Doesn't seem too happy, a little suspicious. That's fair. Yeah, um, six on that too there. Okay. All right. Well, that, that is good to know. You're, you're gonna uh, get it, the good the news is that that doesn't up the churn because it was not a success. Um, <laughs> all right. So you guys are kind of hanging out there, and um, you uh, you get word that Holden's on board. Uh, the crew of the Roth and Nantes on board. Monica Stewart's still interviewing people. Bull's walking around now in this like half like mech suit. Like he's got like a half of a mech. He's got two little joysticks he moves to move around the ship and everything with mag boots. Um, he's kind of slow moving around, but he's, he, can, he can walk around a little bit. Um, Dingo, from your understanding of what you've heard, word on the street is that Bull is paralyzed from basically the chest down. Uh, he has, uh, his spine has been severely severed in several positions. But he's not sharing that information publicly? It's hard not to know. Right. You're walking around the the chief the the second in command of the ship is walking around with a mech that support him from here down. Like he almost mm -hmm. has like a it's almost like a corset he's wearing. It's almost like a like a mechanical corset up to here. Yeah. Right. But it's kind of makeshift. It's, it's very ad hoc. It's very Belcher looking tech. <laughs> hey, brother. You know you're gonna if you burn the candle at both wicks, it's gonna it's gonna melt faster. He's like, look. He's like, I you know. There's a lot to do, but I think we're getting, I think we're settling up. I think we're getting uh, to go into that for this. He's like, uh, there's a lot of people on the ship. We're getting through it and the like. Um, I think you need to understand that right now you're less of a, of a performer doing work. You're becoming a figurehead. And unfortunately that means you got to do less. I need you to stay alive because you're holding everything together. So you need, I've got Tedwin, I've got me, you need to, you need to delegate because if, if brother, I need hey, you like, to hey, protect well, I gotta, your I gotta health. I got to call him and he like, he like brushes you off. He just hangs up on you. Like, this is not like bull, he just hangs up on you. Yup. Uh, um, 
you're like, you know, that was a little out of like something happened. Like he doesn't just hang up on his buddy like this. Okay. I'm gonna. All right. Well, whatever I have clearance for, mm -hmm. I know I'm I'm unlimited in some ways and limited can, in others. He's, but he's I'm, tied I'm to gonna... the security feeds on, yeah. the, on the ship, and um, mm -hmm. you can't eavesdrop on his conversations. But you can kind of see who's talking to who. It looks like he's talking to his like one of his security, his like like top security officers. Uh, it looks like he's talking to uh, Surge specifically, one of the guys mm -hmm. you guys have talked to before. Hey, Tedwin. Um, Tedwin, I need you to log in as me and keep a presence on the security feeds, and I need you to take an active role in just handling minor tasks. I need you to take shit off of Bull's plate. Okay, and he's kind of looking at me, he's like, he kind of, he, he, he gets his login and he goes, there's a lot of chatter going on right now. I know, and Bull's gonna, Bull's gonna break himself. I don't know, I don't think we can stop him. But if he goes, shit's going to get more complicated. So I just need us to silently take on more tasks so that he doesn't burn the candle at both ends. I need yeah, him alive. I, I think uh, something's something's going on. Uh, it's like I, there's a few systems that aren't spawning right now. Uh, I'm locked out of a few. There's a few security systems I'm not like I can't see into. And you, you check on your data pad and you can see like there's certain security systems that you're like you don't have access to anymore. Mm-hmm. Anymore? I did before, but I don't now. Yeah, like and like uh stuff that Bull gave you access to now you don't have access to anymore. And he's like you know, and there's like no notifications in your thing saying like you're being locked out. It's just like you're just locked out suddenly. All right. Hey team. Bull has Bull is starting to lock me out, and I'm losing my omnipotence for our group. So keep your eyes out, please. What's and I'm sure going. Bull locking you out? Yeah, what's happening? You what's see, a, as you guys are talking out, out of the camps, you see a pair of the security officers kind of look at their data pads, and they uh, draw weapons and start running towards, like, underneath the decks. Like, they're running off somewhere to do something. They got a call for something. Something's happening, yeah. Okay. Like most people don't even see it. Like most people just kind of ignore it. They don't. They don't see it. I mean, I've got, I've got a security plus five. Like this is my job. I'm security. I'd like to try and find. No. I'll roll for it. I'd like to try hey, and find things that problem. you're not telling me. Okay, give me a security test. Uh, so you have a plus five to this. And make the storyteller tell me the secrets. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Yeah, you give me a plus. You get a plus five to this one. Reveal. Do it. Reveal. Reveal. Do it. 11. 11. Uh, 17. 17. What was your lowest no. number on in your dice? Two. Two. Uh, why don't you spend uh, five fortune to push that to a 20? That is an acceptable price. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you, go through, you, you, you find okay. some other security systems, you start playing through and kind of going through them and everything. And uh, you get a brief feed on one of them before like it cuts out. There's like a gunfight going on beneath the decks. Uh, it looks like a few of like uh, bull security team. One of the guys you recognize, Surge, is in a firefight with some people. You're not sure who he's in a firefight with, but he's in a firefight. And it looks like it's not far from, uh, you kind of do the schematics. It's not far from the livestock pen, which have no livestock in them. Okay. Um, but you do know the Captain Ashford's being held there. Okay. Sinclair team. Re reconvene at our spot. Have the crate ready to open. There's no one knows there's an active gunfight on the ship right now. And then I'm going to send another private, as private as I can securely yeah. make it, message to Monica. This is a favor. Get somewhere safe. You get a message from Bull, and it basically mm -hmm. it tells you like get your crew and whatever you, whatever gear you have and hide. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait for a call. Okay. So I tell I pass that along to my crew, and then I just send that private one to Monica saying yeah. this is a favor. Get somewhere safe now. This is not a time to get a get a scoop. 
Okay. And she kind of goes, would... oh, okay, she just kind of trusts you on it, and she seems to, like, going off whatever. Um, mm-hmm. You guys see, like, uh, Dingo kind of, like, giving these, like, orders and kind of talking about, like, something's going on, some sort of gunfight going on, whatever it is. Um, you, guys, and you guys have been told by Bull to go hide someplace down below the decks. Don't Basically, don't be in the drum, because, like, it's, that's where everyone's going to see you. Pretty much. Um, does any... Actually, well, actually, I'll have Wyatt. Wyatt, you're, you're kind of standing there and hearing Dingo kind of talk about this. And you can see, like, there's a little bit of blood coming out of Dingo's ear. Oh. Dingo? You all right? One, one more question. Yeah, what, do I see? Can I see the Martians from here? Uh, no, they they're, in it's, a, it's, a, it's a big interior, but I mean, you, you, mm-hmm. can, you, you can ask your friends if they can see them and everything, yeah. Well, if if I sent them a ping before, I can send them just a ping now, like... Oh, yeah, you can contact them, yeah. Like, be safe. Things are uncertain. I'm just going to send them that. They get nothing, you get nothing back from them. But why? Fine. You can see a little bit of blood trickling out of Dingo's ear. You haven't seen anything with them, but, like, something's kind of going on there. You all right, buddy? And you feel fine, Dingo. I don't know, man. Everything's up in the air right now. What, what, this? Yeah. I, yeah, shit's upset right now. I'll let you know if I think I need help, but I'm I'm, I'm fine for now, and there's more important things going on. Well, that's definitely not normal, so... Yeah. What about this is normal right now? I agree. Everything is stretched thin, and I will I will prioritize myself when, when I feel like I need to, but right now, ev- like this, this is happening in different versions everywhere. So th- 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 I'm I'm not I'm not better than everyone else. This is what's going on. Thank well, you. It's just Thank you. It's not uh just pooling up there. Well, don't make me make an order. We need to uh do you know any the layout of this place somewhere that's a little safer than out in the open? Yeah. Awesome idea. Um I Where's is there somewhere good that's in walkable distance? I mean, you for guys us can go that's back, better guys, than where we are. You guys can go under the deck really easy. There's there's lots of different access points to go under because like the the drum has like floors beneath it, and so you can go find the med bay. You can go find like general storage. There's tons of extra uh, offices. I mean, there's tons of shit. Livestock places, places, freezers, food. I mean, there's like a bar down there. I mean, there's tons I, of places. It's a big space. Honestly, my vote space. is med bay. <laughs> These people just, don't need to yeah. stress, but we need someone needs to be there to protect them just in case. Yeah, grab a pistol, but, rifle. But Dingo, weapon. this is this well, ain't, if this ship break if ship breaks out. Don't you think Med Bay is going to be a place people are more likely to uh, show up and make shit? Exactly, and I don't want that. So I don't think we should hide out in Med Bay. Well, uh, uh, protect people we that need protecting people. Un okay. So we can go to Med Bay, we have access to health supplies, and we can help protect the people there, but I that mean, means we're this is accepting just my the risk. Opinion, but yeah. We can ask the cap what she wants to do, because this is just my my idea, my vote. All right. All right. Well, we, Sorry. Still have, we still have a crew member in Med, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. You got Marie down there, yeah. So you yeah, can go grab him. A... So that we have two crew members down there. Yeah, you do. Great. That's true. Michaela uh, and Marie. I'm sorry. Right. Let's protect our people. Med Bay it is. Yeah. yeah. You guys had. You guys start walking. Uh, kind of grab your gear. Um, do you want to keep the rifles in the in the crate? Just carry the crate with you, or how do you want to do that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll just like, take the, you, get down you, there at least. Yeah. If you guys start busting long arms out on the on the deck or whatever it is on the drum, people are gonna freak the fuck out. Yeah, no, no, no. no. We're I'll, just ca- I'll carry. Yeah, take I'll break it. Look yeah. like we're no Waxer picks we're it up. No problem. Wax, are you? Just, great. I mean, this. You are payload. This is your job. Yeah. <laughs> so you pick it up yes. and you guys are walking through with it down down to the med bay. You come on uh there's some security guards there kind of staying outside of it and they, they see you walking up and they go, uh where hey, where are you all headed? And usually you, you haven't you've really been questioned like this before. Oh. Well uh we're gonna go uh we're gonna go see our crewmates over here in Med Bay. You know, I gotta check uh, in my crew. Hey, no we're not doing any business right now. Unless you got business in the med bay, we're trying to we're trying to keep the, the med bay as clear as possible. Fair point of inquiry. Do I, do I, do I think that I can, um, what's what's the word? Uh, big league this guy. Like, you want to try? Yeah. Strong arm. I don't like. I don't know. I'm the vice. Well, I mean, you, I'm the vice chief that... of security on Tycho, but that's like not here. So I mean, 
I'll, I'll give you what my idea would be. Mm. I'd be like, hey, look, buddy, I'm bleeding from the fucking ear. I need to go to med bay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll like, do that. <laughs> I'm fucking there dying, man. All right, but, thanks for the thanks for the yeah, cheat. Yeah, I'm another person. I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be like, yeah, I'd be like, hey, I'm. Was he bleeding from the ears? Oh yeah, you can go to med bay. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. See. But, yeah, you kind of pulled your ear. And bleeding like, from my ears. And my like, XO oh, is thinking uh, about my competence right now. Yeah, yeah. Head on down. Uh, yeah, get, yeah. Get out of here. And they're trying not to like get hassled and everything. And there's yeah. Like, and my ears right. bleeding too. Yeah, yeah. And I just kind of <laughs> yeah. Yeah. punch your ears. Oh, I put myself <laughs> in it. <laughs> yep. Um. All right. So, uh, yeah. You guys go on down in Med Bay. You come on down. There's people down there, kind of hanging out. Whatever. It's all pretty calm down here. And as far as you guys can tell, like no one else seems to know that there's been a firefight on the on the ship. Um. You guys kind of come on down, and people, uh, someone at the front, kind of goes, uh, uh, "Yeah, what? Uh, who needs help here? What's your business?" You're muted. You're muted. Thank you. Um, I mean, everyone on the ship is probably bleeding internally, but I've got oh, blood coming out Jesus. of my ear. Oh, They kind of bring you over, and they go to take you to a room, and we're gonna get you a quick scan and check you out real quick. Uh, everything. Uh, what about anyone else here? Have anything else they need? Uh, Actually, oh, I, yeah. I'm here. I, I'm a captain. I need to check on some of my crew that's here, but uh, go ahead and take care yeah, of what everybody else needs. They point to the wall. They point to like, display the wall and says, like, yeah, look up whoever you're looking for. Just try not to get anyone's way. You got it. You got it. Uh, and they, uh, yeah, sir, you can't bring that crate in here. It's too big. Uh, yeah, it's medical equipment. Yeah, I got special uh, orders from my cap here to bring this up. Some supplies I got to hook up. Uh, yeah, just, just take it. Just take it down the hall and keep it on the side of the, the room there. And they, the rest, the, the rest of you, just uh, try to stay out of the way, okay? Uh, Dingo, yeah, you can yeah. take into a room. I'm gonna follow with Dingo too. Yeah, you come with Dingo, and there's like, there's like, you're kind of waiting there for a second, but it's like a scan room. It's got like, like you know, kind of deep tissue scanners. And someone comes in and they, they see you, Dingo, and they're like, oh, Jesus. Wow. OK. Oh, OK. Yeah, you're OK. Um, they can see the blood coming out of your ears. It's been a little bit worse. They go, um, you have implants, right? They, they, are they locked into your ear? They're my eyes, but yeah. Well, well they, yeah, I mean, they, they go in there. They're locked into my entire yeah, OK. Head. Well, let me go and do a scan real quick. I, this is a little like they're basically they're, your technology in your head is like a lot more advanced than what most people get access to. It's pretty specific. They kind of look at it, they pull a scan, and they look at it and they go, uh, yeah, okay, um, can you, can you lay down for a second? Sure. Lay down, they go and, uh, let me kind of, they kind of take a thing and kind of drain your ear a little bit of the, of the liquid and such, and, uh, is that, you can feel the pressure changes a little bit, it feels a little bit better, like you haven't felt like that kind of relief, but you haven't really noticed it too much until they actually, you know, kind of like took it off of you. And, um, they go, look, uh, uh, this you need to like get some rest here, buddy. Uh, rest here, uh, Dingo. This is a uh, little little rough. It looks like you have uh, some of your stuff moved around a little harsh. I'm guessing when we did the sudden stop. Probably. Um, look, we we I would just recommend you kind of just, we, we get you a bed. You take it easy for a little bit. We monitor it for the next you know uh, 24 hours, 48 hours. I like they're, and they're like doing concussion tests on you and all that stuff like to, that too, but you, you're kind of like getting through it. You're passing the tests. I'm an important person. I will stay here for now. You will not strap me down and you will not take my data pad. Uh, no, look, we, we can't keep you here against your will, but... Um, all right, you, then you, we're you, good. Okay. I, there's a lot of people here. Don't give me priority, but I'll stay here for now. Captain, you've got me if you need me. And you hear, yeah, you, you tell the Myrtle real quick. You, Really get a message saying like he's gonna stick and they kind of give you some tests and like uh basically it comes back that like one of your implants is a little like came a little loose and it seems to be poking parts that it should be poking my brain <laughs> sure let's go with that brain. all right but i don't with, like how you what, said that what else brain. would it be <laughs> brain. Um, use your brains to help well, us all right, what can we do? What can't we do with what's they, on They go, board? well, look, we would want to, uh, I mean, we could, we want to put it a thing to keep it draining. Uh, we probably, if we have a little more time here, put you under, open you up, uh, correct it or take out that part to make sure it's not poking too bad. But you're looking at a few days, maybe like a two weeks at recovery time. I 
can't be unconscious for the next day, how long would surgery take? I mean, the surgery would take a day, but you, I mean... Would be out. Look, you'd be out a day, but you, you at least, uh, and you, you wouldn't be able to walk around uh, for much without severe... I mean, look, this isn't... Uh, this is the kind of thing that, like, you're, you need to fix soon or you're gonna you know you're gonna have a stroke or aneurysm in the next like week or so a week yeah i can go a week before i die i guess yeah all right cool um <laughs> all right give me Honestly, look how how thinly stretched are you right now? I've got I know I mean, we on got a ship of eight hundred, you've got two hundred injured people. We're doing as best we can right now. I mean, I got I got other people to work on, and and you know the drainage is going great, and we got people that are helping out. But I mean, I got others to take care of for sure. Well, go if I have a if I have a few days to make this critical decision, I'll take it. Uh, All right. Well, let, I just put I, me in. Put me in a chair in the they, corner, and they look. look. They, look they look to Wyatt and say, "Hey, you. You heard me warn him, right?" Dude. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, fuck, I, I'm not gonna force you to do anything. Uh, we're here if you when, when you're ready. Okay. They walk out. Wouldn't risk it, bud. I mean, I think you have time to really think about it, but don't don't push yourself to the point where you're gonna stroke out on us. You want me to undergo a day-long surgery while there's an active gunfight on the lower That's, levels of our station? What I think is you should stay right here and relax for a little while. And we yeah. see what happens. Yeah, I'll stay here. I'm not going anywhere. I mean, half of what I do that's of value is digital anyway. So I can do everything that makes me useful from a chair. That's fine. Yeah, and I don't think it, we. this may turn out to be nothing. It may not be as serious as we we feel it might be so we just stick around here for a little bit and see what happens and then we'll make the decision if we need to make the decision out of you know a later time you have a right i've got a couple days yeah. we'll, we'll figure it out um here do you you have a sidearm right yeah and you got your gun yeah. all right i'm not going well okay i guess i'll keep my sidearm everyone's got one never yeah, mind yeah, keep it. okay I, I, I don't hate Wyatt. I know that I come off as a dispassionate bastard. I'm aware of the seriousness. I don't have a better answer because there's a lot going on right now. And I'm sorry that this is the best I've got for us right now. It's all right. Just, I'll just... take care of myself when I feel like there's room to take care of myself because everyone else is safe. Trust me when I say I know exactly how you feel. So... Cool. From one from one leader to another, like that's it. That's how we work. We do what we have to to protect the people we care about. Okay. Go take care of our crew. Uh, Myr- Myrtle, you're out with uh, you. You see Mikhail and Marie. Uh, you, you who do which one you want to talk to first? Marie, the med Marie. tech. Marie. Marie's like doing pretty good. Um, he's uh, he's going. He's like yeah. He's like yeah. I'm doing a lot of good here. Uh, I'm glad we made it over. They needed a lot of any little bit of help has helped, and those supplies went a long way. So, yeah, good okay, on us. Good. Uh, Mikhail's doing pretty good. Uh, oh. So yeah, you can go. He's over there, just kind of recovering. Um, but uh, his, I mean, his arm's a little busted, but we actually managed to reset it pretty well. How long do you think uh, before he is able to do some work? I mean, I wouldn't put him on too much hard work right now, but he's able to move around if you need to walk him around. Okay. I mean, he can just, use, one of his arms is good still. So. Well, you know, I just want to make sure just in case we need to, like, leave, you know, to, you know, get back to the ship or whatever, that we're all cool over here. Okay. Um, it's it, And it's fine if you want to continue to help out here mm-hmm. and just be ready to move out when we're, you know, ready to go back to the ship. Who knows what's going to happen in here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll make sure to do that. If you want to go tell him yourself, you can. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh no. Yeah, I'll go talk. Okay, to but him. I'm gonna get back to work and helping helping some folks here. So. Okay. You're doing good work, All man. Right, there you go. And he goes off, and you see you see Mikhail, and you go talk to Mikhail, and he goes, "Hey, Cap. Like, he's like, hey, not doing too bad. I heard I heard what you guys pulled together for me." Yeah, yeah. How's it going? Are you doing all, all right? Are you feeling all right? I know uh, that. I saw it sucks. The, this right, my right arm's not doing so well, but 
they say it's gonna set. It's gonna take a little while. Yeah. Well, but, uh, you, you know, you could just take it easy. Everything is chill here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've they've got this whole thing with the drum spin up, and oh, everybody's good. been working together. I don't want you to worry about anything while you're here. Um, but they may get to a point where they're going to want everybody to, you know, kind of head back to their ships so they can he help more people. So okay. I just want, I already talked to, you know, we're all on board that as soon as we need to go to, so he, other people he can leans be helped. In. He, oh. he leans in and he goes, he goes, oh, Myrtle, we sit next to each other all, like all day long. Is something going on? I kind of look around. Does it look like anybody's I mean, you can whisper really to him. Yeah, there's a lot of noise in the room. There's a lot of background noise. Yeah. Maybe some things happen here and there. So like, just, uh, just, at some I'm, point, we may need to like uh, evacuate okay. at a t timely okay. manner. And we're uh, discreetly, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got, so right. you kinda, guys are gotcha. just fine. I kind of do the old, you're just fine. Yeah. And we're just going to help out. So you just rest. And I'll, it's like I'll, I describe where we are. It's like, oh, hey, if oh. you feel like you want to make another, you know, give somebody a bed. Then this is where you can find us. We've got, you know, everybody's handing out food Why and sharing. Why are you talking? Zenny and Waxer, you guys are kind of standing towards the front of the med bay, watching you have your crate there. And uh, you see these, like, group of, like, four security, uh, like, officers. So, like, two of them look like security officers. They kind of have the uniform. The other two just seem kind of like general OPA guys, but they're all, like, armed with pistols. Uh, and, two, and the two security officers are armed with rifles, and they're coming into the med bay. Uh, can we, uh... They don't have them drawn. Like, they don't They don't have, like, the, the rifles are kind of put, like, at the... They're slung over their shoulders, but, like, they're coming in a little hot. Looks like they right. want someone. Hey, Zenny, let, let's get down and hide. I'm gonna try to get uh, the crate open and get some uh, gun outs, yeah? Mm -hmm. You may Come not on. want to get in a firefight in the midday. Well, I guess I'll guess be using my muscles then. Okay. The walls here, too, are pretty thin. Like, you, the walls are gonna provide a lot of cover. Um, you, um, but you guys kind of see like something's about to, the, looks like they're looking for someone. You're not sure who they're looking for, but they're looking for someone. You've seen this kind of, you've seen security forces do this before, Zenny. Like they're, they're after someone. Yeah, but they look, so you're saying that they look like half security, half, whoever. Uh, yeah, jabroni. And they're all walking together as if they're like one cohesive group. Yeah. And they're all armed. When like guys That's that are usually in those kind of work outfits usually don't like carry pistols with them. Yeah, yeah. And, um, a, and you haven't seen a security officer with a rifle on, on board here at all. Okay. Okay. Uh... You're on comms with everybody else, so you can talk to them real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... We've got a problem here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll over comms to the, the rest of everyone here. Say, um, we, uh, we might have a situation. There's some folks Move coming on. down. Yeah, they're looking for somebody. Uh, make yourself, uh, looking like you're sick or uh, maybe put something over your face. <laughs> uh, um, am I locked out? I want you to give me a am listen I to this. I, uh, no, you're, you're in those conversations. Dingo, I want you to give me a, uh, and Dingo and, uh, Wyatt, I want you to give me a listening test. Seven. What would listen? What, what uh, would listening under be under? Perception or hearing? It's hearing. So you have a plus five, Jacob. Oh, uh, I do. Yeah, you're actually really good at hearing. You got a bloody oh, ear, yeah. though. Yeah, it's all, it still works. <laughs> uh, nineteen. Oh, that's good. At fifteen. You guys are both in the room, kind of thinking about like whatever's going on, and you hear like the, when the doctor left the room. Uh, you see this, like, one of the security guards, he's got a rifle slung over his shoulder, and they go, uh, hey, uh, we're looking for someone, uh, in here. And the doctor's like, uh, okay, who? And they're like, uh, James Holden. Where the hell, where's Holden? And the doctor's like, oh, uh, geez, uh, yeah, it's, and he kind of starts pointing out that way. And you can see the, the, the four guys start moving, uh, the opposite direction of the entrance to this place. So further in. Further in, yeah. Okay, so that yeah. Just stay where we're at. See where this how this unfolds. Okay. Um, you guys kind of chill out for a little bit. Um, uh, what do you want? Zenny, Myrtle, Waxor? Oh, 
is following them. Zenny doesn't know what the fuck's going on, so Zenny, of course, is following Wait. them. Yeah, follow <laughs> Zenny. <laughs> as quietly as physically no, well, possible. It's, 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 there's no role for this because so, there's so much commotion going on. There's so many people in here and everything. Um, yeah. You see I'm them, used to look. I'm, I'm used to looking like I belong yeah, in a you, place so that you, people can't like. Guys, you know. tell me someone's with our crate. You wax oh, yeah. carrying it. Yeah. Or he's dying with it. He's sitting on it at the yeah. front entrance. Yeah. So you you yeah. see um, these these four guys kind of come up to a door, uh, and they kind of like nod and look. They all draw their weapons. They have it ready. They're going to breach the door, and you see them like kick in the door. Like and it's, it kicks in no problem. And like they have their weapons drawn. They're like not here. And you see them like, go running off the opposite direction, like not towards the entrance. Like they're running off towards the deeper into the ship. Uh, if you guys want to leave, this would be the time. Yeah, I will let everyone know immediately uh, that there's weapons drawn. <laughs> Time um, to go, yeah. Bingo, you still have like a rendezvous, a kind of another point, like looks like a storage kind of area on the behemoth uh, that's been kind of marked as like a rendezvous location, like kind of a, like a, like a, a fallback location. You're muted. Who gave that? Who gave that to me? Was that uh, Tedwin? Tedwin gave that one to you. Yeah, he kind of surmised that one off in the off channels. How recently? Like five minutes ago or an hour I mean, he ago? Gave, he, it, it was a position given to you guys before you guys decided to come down here. Okay. I mean, the ship's big. There's not enough people to like to swarm yeah. the ship. I mean, it's easy to hide. And be a well, boy. for lack of a better choice, I'll ping that location to everyone else. Sure. Um. Right. And I'll stand up and I'll put my hand in my pocket on my plastic bullet loaded pistol mm -hmm. and I'll uh, saunter out with blood. Do I have to separate myself from any machinery? No, you're fine. Okay. And you got like, you can, you can kind of like, you kind of like puff it up a little bit and kind of pat, you know, kind of tap it up and bring to the, not too bad. But um, if someone, someone has a big hat nearby. That I walk by. Uh, that, that, that. The only person that's got a hat on the ship is Miller, and he's not real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you guys kind of like saunter off, manage to get out of here, uh, avoiding it. You can hear there's some sort of commotion. People are moving around the ship a little bit more. Uh, something's up. Uh, Tedwin's trying to assemble information for you as, as quickly as possible. Uh, he's like telling you, get to a secure location, and I'll send you the information. Um, but you all managed to like kind of navigate the tubes through like the automation of the thing, safely get to the storage locker, bring in your your crate, and figure out what to do next. Um, but it all looks right. it looks like uh, Ashford's trying to retake the ship. Oh. All right, I'll use my contact. I'll just text Monica and mm -hmm. say, "Where are you?" Figuring that out right now. Uh, she basically says she's in the drum and kind of uh, we're just moving around, keeping it real casual. Uh, how about you? Are you being casual? We're being real casual, but this is not a casual situation. Well, Are why you? Don't, why don't we? Uh, I think I'm going to take you up in your offer and meet for drinks later. Are where you we can safe? Talk, where, where we can talk safely. Are you safe now? I think we're. I. I, I think we have a. I think we're secure enough. And she's right. kind of. And then you kind of get like a glimpse of her cameraman, and he kind of pans around. There's everyone's kind of hanging out the drum. No one's like firing. There's just some kind of some people hanging out, chilling out. No one seems to be, be wise of what's going on. Get out of the drum. And she. Uh, she's like, sounds like a plan. The rest of you make your way down this this storage facility where you can kind of lock yourselves in. Um, one thing you're noticing about this place, uh, uh, Dingo, is that like a lot of the security doors haven't been programmed for security yet. All of them, most of them, default to the default code, which is zero 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 zero. Um, no one's really like programmed anything on the ship yet. Uh, and, and you come into the, you guys come into an empty storage room. There's just some lockers, not even crates. It's very empty. I mean, the room is absolutely one hundred percent clean. Like, can I program it with an advanced sure. code? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you go up and you, you know the security door is clear. You've done. You've worked with this, this brand before, and you go up and you give a security uh, code. So you guys are pretty secure in this room for at least for a, a moment. Um, waiting. The password is boobs eight zero zero eight five. No, it's not. I'm kidding. I'm just, it's something. It's boobs. Intense. 
No, it's boobs now. I'm sorry. I dr I just drug the moment no, down. I'm it's so sorry. It's 2069. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, Nick right. Michaels' code for his locker. So you guys kind of, you guys, <laughs> you guys kind of come, you guys kind of uh, take a second, get a breather, trying to wait, figure out what's going on, debate it a little bit, uh, and we're going to end there. Um, everybody gets <laughs> everybody gets back, uh, so I don't forget to do it next session. Everybody gets back um, 13 plus your constitution and fortune for taking a moment out. Everyone, yes. that is our show for tonight. Uh, Jacob, how'd, uh, how did you have fun with that one? So much fun. I. You don't have to lie to me, man. You don't have to lie to me. Is... Say again? You don't, you don't have to lie to me. Dude, I don't think I don't think Jacob can lie in this space. <laughs> oh, no. That's true. Dingo can lie, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm incapable of lying. The, the the only way I've found to get through uh, situations is to just be embarrassingly honest. Um, <laughs> I this is John. I I mean the the tension is mount. We only have one episode left of this what little. Are you Thing. Like, but then you're out here just saying, "Oh, I'm just. Gonna, it's fine if I die in a week." And we're all I'm like, like, "No." <laughs> yeah, we're like, we need no. a patch. Oh, that thing I didn't even think to about die. that, yeah. guys. That was yeah. not coded. That was that not was, yeah. like, distinct. That was absolutely 100. <laughs> no, I that was like, Dingo, and I thought that, that was great. <laughs> hey, you, ever, yeah. you ever watch a kung fu movie? If you bleed out of the ears, it's serious, man. <laughs> no, John that's is, where your brain lives. Yeah. <laughs> John is tossing balls in the air and he's <laughs> adding them and adding them and we'll see oh, how this It was cool. I, gotta, I, gotta, I actually today was like one of my, my I, I really try not to bring name characters into it and play them, but I did Tilly tonight. That I did, was so fun. Did, yeah, did you like Tilly? Tilly's well, a bitch. It was, it was like, nice. I, like I hate her. I hate her. I, hate her. <laughs> I love her and I hate her. She's what's funny like, in the book. Yeah. What's, what's yeah, she's really great is um, because I haven't gotten to do that whole like earther kind of chill bonding kind of thing in yeah. a long, long time because we've been out here. So it's just kind of like bringing up those skills of playing the game, the earth game. I actually you forgot. Know, politics. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I said, also, John, I have to mention, I totally forgot about the comm laser thing until it was happening. I yeah. totally forgot about the that. The comm laser is freaking mm -hmm. nuts. I, I forgot about that, too, yeah. I totally forgot about Yeah, the comm laser it, so. thing is nuts. Uh, it's like, oh. yeah, the base of the behemoth is like, we're the biggest ship here, we can save everyone, and we have the only gun. I totally forgot about it. So it was cool. <laughs> the only gun that, that works, yeah. 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 yeah, we have the only gun, yeah, because everything, because it's not, it's not above the quantum level, so it works. Yeah, it's really yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but I got to throw a few characters there. That was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, Juarez came up. If you haven't read the books, dude, Juarez is a bad motherfucker, yeah. dude. Yeah. That dude is like, that dude's like MVP in the freaking, like, like for, yeah. He's kind I was of a totally going to sl uh, slide a hand, pixie dust him, and then tell Bull, but I pulled, I restrained <laughs> yeah. myself. Not, yeah, um, books, but yeah, yeah. Bad Gate's not bad. It's a dirty book. Yeah. It, it's a, it's nasty, but it's like it's a slog. But it's like, so good. It's it gets pretty good. Yeah, I, I yeah, like. It um, does. I think that like the elevator scene in that book is a fucking much better than the show. The show wasn't bad, but like the elevator scene in the book is fucking dirty. And it's yeah. like it's like it's like three chapters or some <laughs> shit. Like, anyways. <laughs> um. All right. So uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we're gonna be back next week. We have a giveaway. I. Uh, we're going to be giving away the behemoth scale giveaway. Uh, I'll have uh, I'll have all that set up and everything like that. So the final records, so the dice sets from Green Ronin. Uh, Jacob will be back for his uh, his last appearance in the month of it. Uh, as we kind of round out this. Uh, Jacob, but not his last appearance ever, right? Right. Right. No promises. Maybe. No promises. It's live. It's live <gasps> Twitch. Jacob, why? Dana, can you just imagine how how oh, it's going to be so sad and the episode after Jeez. Jingo is gone. I'm just will, gonna go. Uh, uh, well, I guess Zoom call is gonna be so like empty, so boring. <laughs> no, it won't. No. You guys are the best, and yes, of course I'll come back. I'm having a huge. Yay! Rest. I'm just doing a million things, yeah. so it's on the consistent so basis. So say we are. I'm getting <laughs> married in what, like, yeah, in twenty Nothing. days. Um, Jeez. Yeah, exactly. Come on, man. Give it's been break. awesome just having you on for a whole month. That's like yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Guys, it's an honor to be here. I'm, we're gonna get you used to you, and then you're gonna go. I'm a nerd we're all first. gonna cry. I'm a nerd first, actor second. So <laughs> being an being an actor who did a nerd thing is amazing. Um, if I can do a brief shout out, I've Please. noticed in the time that this has happened, 
Theater Evolved has gotten a donation from a K McMahon. Maybe that was one of my friends, like one of my my associates doing getting donations. But K McMahon, if you are an Expanse fan who donated because of our little shout out today, uh, DM me on Twitter or Instagram. My Twitter is at Jacob D Mun at Jacob D Mundell. My Instagram is Jacob Oh, it's, anyway. uh, it's someone in our chat named uh, Kalija. And Kay they, McMahon. They, and Kay we will Kalija. be sure to, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to, uh, there's Jacob's information in the chat, his Twitter. So if you want to go follow him on Twitter and DM him oh, or on Instagram. Awesome. I'd, love to send, I'd love to send you out a, sh a shout out. So thank you for that. And uh, that's it. Plug over. <laughs> Yay. Uh, and, I, and I put the Theater Evolve link again. So please thank you again for donating to that. Super cool. Thank you for yeah. those that gave out uh, uh, subs to my channel tonight too. That's great. The, the cheers are fantastic. We appreciate everybody. Uh, I didn't. I didn't voluntarily just put up my Kofi, but apparently our, our, our Kofi went up to <laughs> right when I was talking about it. Um, so thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we're back next week, Wednesday, six p.m. Six our time with Jacob Mundell, uh, his fourth episode as the events of Abaddon's Gates freaking ramp the fuck up. Let's go, uh, guys. Yeah. I will. We we are looking forward to it, and uh, it's always the longest wait for it. Everyone, thank Don, you so everyone's much. Everyone's gonna be fine, and no one on the Behemoth is gonna die, right? Right. 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 Yeah. Now close your eyes and look away. <laughs> <laughs> Save Mick Michaels. Save Save Mick Mick yeah, it's all Mick Michaels, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um and yeah, so very, very cool. Thank you everybody for watching that too. Uh, Thank you guys. Great. And, uh, Thanks. Oh, and, and Thanks big so shout much. out Thank big you, shout everybody. out to Graham uh to, to Lynn for uh <gasps> Graham Lynn. Letters in the chat tonight. Thank you you Lynn was here. Your art is killing Amazing. it. Every time, like, every time you get an update to the crew, they just freak the hell out. And my shoes are so shiny, I can't wait for y'all to shoes. see them. Yes. My bunnies, my it's bunny so killer. It's the bunny so slippers killer. are killer. Yeah, I'll, I'll just tell you the updated version them. of it, Jacob. It looks pretty sweet. Uh, it's everybody, so we're going to go raid uh, after I run the bumper, but we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, go everybody. Go White Snake. Go White Snake. <laughs>